Um, yeah, we rewrote every single ability in the game that has been changed, like fundamentally rewrote all of them. Imagine this. So now my old buff bar is completely gone and it's yeah, always solid. permanently fixed. I can change the size, I can change the order, I can put it wherever I want instead of the old buff bar. The entire poison meta is a bug. Yeah, it's a bug. Oh, 100%. <laughs> nice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Dev Hour. In this one, we've got the master of RuneScape combat himself, Mod Sponge, who's going to be talking a whole lot about the combat beta, why the beta is happening now, and what his ideal version of RuneScape combat looks like going forward. We usually like to keep these chats quite a bit shorter, but in this one, the whole conversation was awesome and he was super generous with his responses. And going through the entire thing, he actually shared a lot of really cool insight as to what him and Mod Ryan are thinking when they're looking at redesigning the entirety of combat in RuneScape. So with that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy. It is absolutely a long one, but hopefully by the end, you'll find it to be worth it. So I'm joined by by Mod Sponge as well as Pup. Um, if you guys want to like give a quick intro of of what you guys are doing here and 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 sort of what we're going to be talking about, that'd be awesome. We can start with Sponge. Uh, I am here to go over the combat beta stuff that myself and Mod Ryan are working on. That has been my life for a little while now. So um, yeah, I'm slowly falling into oblivion. But yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, I am here to help explain stuff, I guess. I mean, um, I do a lot of PBM, so hopefully this is an interesting discussion for me. I think the combat beta is got some really nice changes, so hopefully it'll make everything a little bit easier in the future. Yeah, it should be a good kind of fun discussion. So just to elaborate on that a little bit, um, Mod Sponge and Mod Ryan are the two primary people who are running this combat beta with all of these massive sweeping combat changes. Uh, so they're the people that are collecting feedback and making adjustments to it and, and putting things through. So we thought it'd be really good to have Sponge on here to communicate sort of the why on some of these changes, why these things are happening, what the logic is behind them, and also like what kind of feedback and things that they're looking for to make sure that combat ends up coming out of this in the best spot it possibly can. And then for Pup, uh, Pup is an extremely end game high tier PVMer with a very, very deep understanding of a lot of the intricacies in combat. Uh, so he's gonna be a perfect person to get very, very technical here. And then I am pretty much here to MC and also kind of dumb things down when necessary, because uh, I know Pup and Sponge can talk to each other and get super, super technical. So I'll be there to be like, I don't understand that. And then hopefully we can get some explanations. First thing for 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 Mod Sponge, why why this beta? And why are we looking at making these changes to combat right now? Um, so it's a good question as to why uh with necro obviously combat's kind of gone gone to the the front of the limelight um and was able to make some really nice system changes uh with necro um but following on from that it kind of became apparent that the other styles weren't really up to scratch um so myself and mod ryan essentially asked if we could uh try to fix everything and modernize everything um not just for players but for other developers as well um the combat system has kind of evolved over the years i want to say just as obviously runescape's old game um and there's so much content plugged in that you have you have you've had it kind of have stuff everywhere basically is how, how i'd explain it it's like it's it's a room that needs tidying um but there's so much stuff in the room it takes a long time to tidy um so yeah that that's kind of the why we're doing it um it, it sets us in a position where um we can make combat great for runescape um that's kind of the the long and short of it really i think going over the news post a lot of the the points in there and i think a lot of players will feel this as well if you read through it it will explain an issue with combat or something that wasn't listed. And even for me, some of them I didn't even know. I was like, wait, I've been hitting less for the last 10 years and I had no idea. So is a <laughs> is a big objective of this beta to make things, I, I want to say, a little more intuitive? Yeah, oh, 100%. That's like, that's like <laughs> the go-to word right now. Whenever, whenever uh, myself or Ryan is like working on a change, we're like, is this intuitive? It was like, yeah, cool. It's a good change then, probably. Um, like you said, there's there's stuff I didn't even know was was a thing. Um, even now, I'm getting pings from PVME saying, "Oh, do you know about this thing?" Um, and I'm like, 
stop bothering me. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, it's it, there's so much stuff in there. There's all these kind of weird quirks, and it's just just building it in a way that people can actually understand it, and not just the one percent of the one percent, right? Um, because some of the assumptions they make on how these things works aren't aren't actually correct either. Um, they're just yeah, they're assumptions on on weird mechanics working together. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so, Pup, as a member of that 1% of the 1%, uh, I think a, a good follow-up for you is, how do you feel? Because because there's there's a bit of, a, I don't even want to say a rift, because it's not really. I think the majority of people are really happy with these changes, because, you know, the mm -hmm. long-term vision, and, you know, if you let the devs cook, the, the, end, the end vision is a combat that makes sense and is easier to pick up and learn, which means more people are playing the game and enjoying RuneScape and don't have this massive wall to have to scale to be able to understand how combat works, which most people, I, I think, feel like is a really good thing. But I know in the end game communities, there's a little bit of a sentiment of like, a lot of these janky, weird interactions are the kind of things that you love to analyze and understand and use in order to get some of your your most interesting or most fun speed kills. So how do you go about kind of in, in your head, kind of balancing the pros and the cons? And, and how do you feel about, you know, this this direction change in this this potential new system up, update that makes things a little simpler to understand, but also by getting rid of some of those intricacies that you potentially would really like? It's definitely an interesting one, because like you said, there are lots of intricacies in combat that a lot of higher tier players really like. They like that it, things don't work as you expect, um, but that sounds awful because then everyone else has no idea how that works. Um, I think a lot of people liked Necromancy when it came out because it was pretty simple uh, in that you knew exactly what you were doing, why you were doing, you knew what abilities did. Um, and I think the combat beta and the changes that um, Sponge Ryan and everyone else has been working on have definitely made things simpler. Like, for example, you said earlier that you don't know that bleeds average isn't their actual average. Um, and it's like, I, I do know that, but I don't know why. It's just how it it's just how it is. Um, and there's so many other weird changes that hopefully it will be easier for people to understand things. Um, obviously, the tooltip changes have been great. They look really nice. Um, so yeah, the, the downside from a high tier player perspective is that if some things become too simple, um, then you sometimes lose a bit of that spark with the kind of the high end of PVM. Obviously that's, you know, a very, very small player base. Um, but from talking to Ryan and Sponge, they definitely uh, want to add other intricacies with their own kind of systems. Um, and I think the aim is to add new things that they can then make, um, simple easy to understand from the moment they add them they're not just building on some weird janky system that's existed for 20 years um so all of the changes i've seen i've i've really liked honestly um especially the the changes today i've, I've looked through all of them um some of them are really really good and i, I think they'll definitely be a benefit okay so something you mentioned there is the idea of adding more intricacies in the future and that uh, speaking with with mods ryan and sponge they seem keen on on doing that so for you, Sponge, is it kind of a system where for endgame PVMers that might be a little disgruntled with what they could consider like the simplification of, of the game they love, is it kind of a situation where you'd ask that they kind of let you guys cook for a little bit and let you guys um, let you guys um, like actually finish simplifying it, making these systems make sense, and then that way you can then come in later and, and add those complexities, if you'd want to speak on that. Yeah, exactly. Um... I'm gonna go get in now. I'm gonna apologies for me swearing. I swear a lot. Um, I've got a bit of a point in my mouth, but um, yeah, with some things with like the the, the really high end PBMers, it's kind of like, guys, calm, calm the fuck down. We're just, we're just changing a little thing. We're seeing how it plays out. Calm down. And then we'll go do some cool stuff. Yeah, but, but we need to simplify this for us to do the cool stuff. It's, it, it's, a, it, it's a really weird situation because RuneScape players at the very top end they like jank. But they like jank because there's nothing else there. There's no there's no substance to, to actually get your teeth into, right? Um, myself and Ryan were talking, Mod Ryan were talking about this, and we was like, because I'll, I'll show you some stuff in a little bit, but um, we will, some of the stuff we've been uh, designing or working on behind the scenes, we're like, this is really fucking cool. Guys will love this. Um, and then when you compare it to the jank before, it's like it's like night and day. Um, so yeah, as soon as as soon as we can clean up, make the base system simple, 
we can do so much cool stuff. We we can add really cool intricacies. We can we can add actual skillful mechanics. I want to say, um, but we need to make the system simple to get into, easy to understand, and then we can do those things. Um, I think my favorite example is auto attacks or basic attacks. Um, the top end PVMers love basic attacks, but they are so janky. A basic attack is supposed to be the simplest thing in the game, right? You click and you attack. But in our game, it's not. It's so clunky to actually get one out. But if we simplify basic attacks in basic attack system, like necromancy, not necessarily the same, but do something similar where it's easy to understand, easy to get into, we can then expand that and make it really cool. And then we can add complex stuff on top of it. We can actually add complex abilities. Um, look like melee has what, 25 abilities, maybe more, 30? 30 abilities, I want to say. Something like that. It might be 30 dead on. Um, and I reckon 80% of those are does damage. And that's basically like the long and short of the entire effect. Like, there's a lot of room there to do a lot of cool stuff, but we need a basic, simple system for your average player to understand and actually interact with combat. Um, so yeah, like you said, um, it is tough to deal with the high-end players. But I think with some of the changes we've got in the beta so far and some of the upcoming ones that we're kind of working on, they're going to kind of get it more, is what I want to say. Um, once they realize it's a beta, if they don't like something, we don't have to do it. And if it's like universally agreed on that people don't like this thing, we don't have to do it. I think there'll be a lot more understanding. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's that really. Okay. And um, you've mentioned a couple times that it, this is mostly or almost entirely, this is pretty much you and Maud Ryan going through and taking Correct. a ton of time just reworking. Like, I, I'm assuming you might have been one of the people to do this. Like, I'm assuming you've just spent the last week just rewriting every tooltip in the game. Uh, <laughs> a little bit longer than that, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so... So um, so just before the beta was announced, we, we'd been given some time and we'd started, started going through it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've gone through and done... I did Magic and Melee, Ryan did Ranged and more of the core systems. So this is an absolute ton of work that, that you have both put in for this beta and for these future combat changes. Is this closer to a like job project or is it closer to a passion project for the two of you, would you say? This is definitely passion. Um, Brian and I asked for this to happen um, and uh, producers and whatnot were lovely enough to say, yeah, let's do it. Um, so yeah, it's definitely passion um, and hopefully that comes across um, so I saw a few people in my AQD were a little confused about the potion stat boost changes. Um, mm -hmm. so I went through them and I sort of explained the, the base, how it works and why it impacted smaller hitting abilities more than, than higher hitting abilities. But overall, I think a lot of people are, are nervous that this is going to be like an overall nerf to everyone's damage by a little bit and it's kind of like the same overload change that was previously released and that had to come back so i guess i guess, I guess a question on that is just is this would you consider this a nerf at all or are you gonna just be making adjustments to existing abilities so that we don't even notice that it's there um right this second i would say it's a nerf but it's a beta by the time we're leaving the beta you probably won't consider it a nerf right the problem with the potion stat changes, like you said, it affects low hitting multi hit abilities more than it does single hits. Like as, a, as an average player, I come in and I read an ability does an average of 100% twice or an ability does 200% once. I should just be able to interchange those. It shouldn't matter to me unless I'm doing something specific in my play style that changes those. So for the most generic buff in the game, which is just a stat boost, that shouldn't be pushing me to multi-hit or single-hit abilities. That, that, that's insanity. Um, with that in mind, there's, there's people that are like, oh, but now potion stat boosts aren't, aren't impactful enough. We can, we can do stuff with like the, the core of how damage is calculated and make stats commit more to your damage than weapons or armor. We can do that. It's not, it's not the, a big deal. Um, I think it's a little overstated as to how much potions should do. I think in live they do too much um and i think we should keep that space more open so that we can have more different potions like right now you have overloads that's it and you have overloads overloads two overloads three and you just have a load of different overloads it's a bit weird 
Um, in terms of like the general balancing, if, if players are getting a 5%, so purely hypothetically, if they're getting a 5% damage decrease right now, by the time they leave the beta, let's just punch the numbers up by 5%. Now that we've rewritten all the abilities, the things that were 90% averages, we can just make them 95% averages, 100% averages. Like, it's really easy to do now. Um, it's not to, to call out the community for overreacting, but there are some members that are just straight up overreacting to this and forgetting they're in a beta. And that's why we put it on the beta. Okay, so it's it's technically a nerf on the beta in, in particular, but you wouldn't let it go to live necessarily as a nerf, or if you didn't exactly. want it to, you don't have to. You're going to get so much stuff that is going to be buffs in different ways. Like, let's just let it kind of normalize itself. Yep. Um, we're not just going to push the, the potion changes out by themselves. Yep, I... Uh... No, that's that's definitely good to good to cover. Something that you mentioned there is that it's really, really easy for you to bump up the damage values on abilities now. So does that mean that in addition to making these actual changes to tooltips and, and how these abilities work, have you also updated the systems with, with which they run through in order to make these changes easier? And if you could take me through that, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, we rewrote every single ability in the game that has been changed, like fundamentally rewrote all of them um, so that now we change one number and it will change the ability throughout the entire system. It'll do the tool to build do everything. Um, whereas before it'd be like, oh, we want to up this number. Okay, let's go find the tool tip, change the tool tip. Let's go find the rate at which the channel is running let's go change that let's go find the actual fixed damage let's go find the random damage let's change those whereas now it's like uh 95 yeah not feeling it let's make that 100 done bang it can go out wait, wait, so, um, so you've changed every single ability in the game excluding defense and constitution right now as we're gonna do those later um we just <laughs> no one uses most of them right so we was like let's let's focus our efforts on meaningful stuff right now until we get in a place where we can rework some stuff um, but yeah, every, everything's been reworked. Follow up to that. Uh, are you guys doing OK? <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a big headache yesterday, uh, a <laughs> really bad one. Um, but that was mostly Seren Godbo induced. Um, outside of that, it's been pretty smooth running, really. Um, Mod Ryan's an absolute tank. He just smashes stuff out and doesn't seem to affect him. So an absolutely insane undertaking. Um, that is insane. But I think it's it's really it's good to see because yeah, allowing to make those changes easy. Like I, and maybe this this might not be something that everybody agrees with, but I like to see more frequent changes to things. And I think in the past things get nerfed or buffed, and it takes too, a, a little bit too long for a lot of people in the community. So I think the ability to change these systems a little more easily and make adjustments on the fly that that seems like a really valuable. Um, it seems like a really valuable you know, time sink or time investment right now. But yeah, I can imagine that's an absolute headache and a half to do. Uh, so honestly, just mad oh, to both yeah. of you guys to, to do that. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Pup, did you have any any specific questions for uh, for Sponge about any of the changes from today? Um, I did, but I was, I was gonna touch on something he said was the, the all the abilities that he uh, rewrote. Now he can change one number and it will change everything. Um, and I think that's quite a big part of the whole combat beta and changes as a whole because I remember uh, it might have been a month or so ago um, Sponge was rewriting Revenge and a couple of the other buffs um, simply just to make them way simpler because they, they worked on a really janky system um, and I think the whole aim is to make basically mean that if they want to make changes now the systems run in such a simple streamlined way that they can just change what they need it's not like a buff or nerf so I think if they, if they, because for example they changed revenge and it um, changed the damage of it, and Sponge was just like, oh, if it's too high, tell me. If it's too low, tell me. Because it's a much simpler change to make. Um, so I think it's nice to hear that all the abilities have been reworked, so that if we come back from this beta, we say, oh, Melly is doing slightly too little damage, as an as an example. Um, it is very easy for them to change that, um, and I think that's why removing the potion buff is quite a good thing because. It just removes extra steps in that system. Um, the less steps in that system, uh, it makes combat a lot more easy to understand. Um, and I think that's why a lot of players like necromancy currently. Um, it's quite a simple, quite a simple thing to understand the damage you're doing and everything. Um, as for questions of current changes, I didn't really have some. I did have one. Um, 
which was let me find it um yeah so you said the the linked damage abilities so for example snapshot you said that the damage is uh, i believe based off the first hit and then yeah um yeah i as a high tier pvm that does a lot in this game did not know that was a thing at all <laughs> ever um so that really surprised me to read actually um and it's definitely things like that that you're just getting rid of which is really nice yeah um, there's a lot of weird jank like that um mm -hmm. a lot of it was more noticeable with the potion stat boost that was in before which was stuff like um i think greco was one of them where um, and this is actually the reason we haven't changed uh greco to account for potion stat is that the first shot got the full potion stat boost and the next shot's mm -hmm. got half the potion stat boost and the next shot's got a quarter of the potion stat boost and it was just like oh no oh, so i'm actually oh, I'm, no. I'm getting I'm not getting anywhere near as much damage as i think i am i um, see Interesting. it's those sorts of abilities where yeah they just they, they start doing really weird stuff um, and depending on where they apply they can have wacky side effects um so yeah getting rid of those is a big thing um mm -hmm. The players won't see it because it's an in it's in it's in the system, but it's like making everything in the system be where it's supposed to be. So like those were damage changes and they were in the attack system where it's calculating the attack out. And they should just be where all the damage is calculated. It's just, it's just you know, tidying up, putting everything where it's supposed to be, and then you you'll be able to read something and go, Oh yeah, it works like this. It's like it's like mm -hmm. um you were talking about revenge earlier. It was like you'd read revenge, and not know what it does. Because, because yeah. of how it affected the damage ranges, right? Um, I think it was Mod Ryan that said it before, is like, if I can't read the tooltip and know what it's doing, it's wrong. Like, that shouldn't yes. be a thing. I should be I able to read that. it and understand it. Um, so that's like a general point where we're trying to live by. These changes are awesome. Like, I think I might be out of a job by the end of the year. And that's like, that's <laughs> awesome. Because like, for, and it seems really silly, but like you, you put it perfectly. If a tooltip can't be just read and understood, the tooltip is wrong. And I love that in the future, like once these changes come through, I will be able to, instead of telling people to, you know, read a wiki page or watch a guide or whatever to understand how to deal damage, I will be able to straight up be like, so read the tooltip and the things that say they hit more, hit those buttons more and you will hit more. And the ones and there's no like, oh, yeah, so read the tooltip, but also this ability doesn't work like that. And this tooltip is wrong. And this like it just it makes me really, really happy to see. It's been a very long time coming. Um, mm. But yeah, no, I just want to say, like, I, I'm, I'm very, very stoked for not only like the specifics of the beta, but just what the beta means for the future of, of combat and RuneScape and, and leaving it in a really good place. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, something you said there it remind, it reminded me of a saying that's in one of the card games I play it's reading the card explains the card and that that should just be the mantra of how combat works if you can read it it explains it um, in the live game that's not true that should be how it is though some people are people are mentioning like well yeah but like people i'm you know i'm gonna call it mod shogun mod shogun said to be honest the biggest challenge is to make people read tooltips and like i think that's very fair too is that a lot of players won't read the tooltips and that's that's totally fair but to me the the issue isn't necessarily getting players to read the tooltip the issue is that players need to be able to trust the tooltip because for the people that do take the time to read it, like surely you can, you can care about the people that aren't going to read the tooltip and that's where visual clarity and all that comes in. And that's great. But at the end of the day, it's really important that if someone does take the time to expand their knowledge of exactly how something works, that it's outlined in a way that makes sense to them. Cause otherwise the game is just misleading them. And I think that's that's a big reason why these changes are very important is it's not just getting rid of, oh, jank or little things here. It's getting rid of information the game gives the player that is wrong. Yes, absolutely. Um, on the, the notion, something Shogun said there, which is like it's hard to get players to read the tooltip. That's, that's kind of a benefit of like a necro skill tree um, or I forget what it's actually called. I always call it a skill tree. I don't know if that is what it's called. Talent tree? Um, yeah, something like that. Um, that's the benefit of it. Like when you're making a decision between X and Y, you're more likely to actually read the things because you feel like you could miss out here. Whereas like with melee right now, oh cool, I've unlocked an ability. I'm not going to read that. But it doesn't matter. Um, I think as a new player, something like a talent tree where you go through and unlock all the abilities would actually be really beneficial there. Um, that's more pie in the sky stuff, but... Um, 
maybe, maybe that's something we can do at one point when we're when we're moving towards uh, giving styles more of an identity. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe the ideation or the, the the plan for the talent tree, one of the main reasons why it even existed, was as a way to get people to read. Am I correct about that? A hundred percent. Yeah, hundred <laughs> um, percent. It is absolutely that. Because um, yeah, like like I said before, you unlock something, it's cool. I might read that later. I'm not doing it right now. I'll press it. Oh, what'd that do? I didn't do very like, very good damage. I won't use that again. And then they, if you actually read it, it's like, oh, cool. If I'd used this and then this, it would have exploded and done 10 times damage or something like that. Like, it's actually hard to get players to, to process that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a starter path with a with a talent tree, I think, is is very good. That, no, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I think, yeah, even like on release, we were getting a lot of questions of like, oh, what should I unlock next to my talent tree? What's what's the best thing? What's the worst thing? And like that already gets people more in tune with how the combat style works than just a, a normal skill where you train it and you get a million abilities. So I think that's a really, really good. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's kind of a, I think if Mod Ryan were here, I think he'd call it a, uh, a, a, a development hack um, to get <laughs> people to read. I'm looking at all the tooltips now and all of them look really really nice although i do wonder if channeled ability tooltips should maybe be worded slightly differently um because the interesting thing with channels is that there's the length of time it takes you to do the ability before your next ability and then there's the length of the time that the damage actually hits and for a lot of channeled mm -hmm. abilities they're not the same amount of time um so as an example like assault takes um it says X amount of melee damage per hit every 1.2 seconds. And that is how often um, Assault hits. But it doesn't take that long to cast Assault. Um, so I was wondering yeah, if you yeah. were thinking about changing those to have maybe a uh, cast time or something like that? I think that's a good idea. Um, that along potentially with total damage for some of these abilities I think could be good. Um, mm -hmm. I think ideally with like, like a shift key in it if you shift over a tooltip it goes Bleh! and explains everything um because there is some information that can be too much um, yes 100 i had something earlier i can't think of where it was but i was reading something and i was kind of like our players don't actually need to know this like it, it's, it's just bloat mm -hmm. um i'll see if, i'll try and remember if that comes to me um but no yeah. i think you're right like a deal so it'd be like deal x to y damage and that is the on cast bit, and then followed by X to Y damage every 1.2 seconds, as, as an example. Maybe. Uh, or if, if I was an average player to that. learning how long I channeled, mm -hmm. uh, how long I need to channel something like assault, I would yeah. much, I would value the information of how long I need to cast the channel much more than how long it takes to actually deal the damage. Yeah, yeah. So if, if, if an average player says, How long do I need to do assault for? They don't, probably they don't care when the damage actually hits. They just want to know how long they should be doing it for. So maybe yeah. you should actually swap those to so, kind of assault. explain more. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. Um, I'm trying to think how we'd actually do that. Um, there was something Mod Ryan said earlier where it's essentially we want to rework the channel system um, because right mm -hmm. now it's very... I don't want to say hard to work with, but it is kind of hard to work with. Um, so we're forced into doing different things with it. Yeah. Um, but like, so say right now you use Assault, it, you do the ability, and then it starts a timer, and two cycles later, you do the next ability. And it's basically just running the ability back through, um, making a channel system. So it just, it just happens every tick, no matter what. And then we decide mm -hmm. when we want the hits to go. Um, right now, you couldn't really do, as an example, uh, I want Assault to hit on cycle one, then cycle two, then skip two cycles, then hit again, then skip two. We couldn't do that. Okay. Um, but rewriting it, we could do much more intricate things with it. Um, mm -hmm. and, then, and then obviously look at how channels in general are tool tipped. Um, yeah. I, think I, just, this, I like, just noticed we're that. We're at a good, at good start. But I th yeah, no, I agree, I agree with you. I think we're at a good start, but like you said, I think that even even now there's still improvements so i think there there's always going to be I, I agree with what pop said where like a, a less experienced player doesn't necessarily care how many game ticks it takes for the channel to actually 
go off. But I do also think, I mean, and, and I think this is one of your learnings from Necromancy is that, uh, what's it called? The blood, is it the blood siphon ability? Is that what blood it is? Siphon. Yes. People yeah. hated it and people don't really like it and people don't like using it because channels in general are kind of weird and a little confusing. Um, I was wondering if you had any update on the channeling bar. Uh, and if for people in chat don't know what that is, the idea of a channeling bar is instead of the tooltip saying how many game ticks it lasts for, uh, whenever you cast a channeled ability, you get a bar above your character's head that just fills up and it's a progress bar so you know when to press the next ability. And to me, that's a better solution than just changing the wording of the text because then you don't need to include the length Great. of it at all. It just intuitively press button, wait till bar full, press next button. Agreed. Um, there are some things where putting it in a tooltip would be very wordy. And it's like, if you use it once, you go, oh, okay. And something like a channel bar definitely helps with that. Um, that's something Modern Ryan was working on on a previous game jam. Um, I think he wants to try it in the beta. Um, we've not actually spoken about it in quite a while. Uh, there was talks when we were doing necromancy about adding it. Um, something called... I'll, 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 I'll chase him up on. Um, yeah, I think, I think that would definitely be, be good. Yeah, I think because because currently we have the, the the buff bars that show how long a an ability is channeling for, um, mm -hmm. and uh, along with many other issues, the buff bar has it's not that obvious that it's there unless you know it's there. Um, so having something in a, a more visible spot um, definitely would be a good change. I think. Okay, I've got a melee question for you. Oh God! In today's iteration of the beta. You respectfully buffed the crap out of melee um, in a number of changes. And the two most pertinent ones, I would say, are the first change is Greater Fury. Now, 100% critical strike on your next ability, melee only. Uh, so effectively, in practicality, what that means is you'd use it every third ability. And every third ability, you get a, you get a forced critical strike. Um, so thoughts on, or, or, or if you could take me through kind of the logic of doing that and, and sort of, cause I'm sure like a good amount of thought went into that change. I think it's a really fun change and it carves out a really good identity for melee, but, uh, yeah. What was the thinking? Was it just like, let's just make this a hundred percent and see what happens or what went down? It's funny that you say a good amount of thought went into it. Me and Ryan <laughs> just went, oh, no. we do something about greater fury and we went, yeah, fuck it, YOLO. <laughs> let's, let's just 100%, let's see what happens. Like, it's a beta. Let's, we should have these opportunities just go, yeah, see what happens. Um, and that was one of them. Even since we've done that, we've gone, oh, we have this other idea. Maybe we'll try that next time. Um, chances are, Fury, Fury will get reverted and change something else, and we'll just try multiple different things. Um, we've been having a lot of chats about style identity in general um, and trialing some stuff out there. Um, tying back into lengths and stuff and trying to make melee cohesive because melee is just kind of a, a dumpster fire of just random stuff piled together. Um, it, it's weird that the style with the most ability coverage does like the least interesting stuff. Um, but yeah, we've been, we've been talking about like how can we differentiate two hand and dual wield and what is what is the identity of bleed in melee versus this berserker style um and yeah generally more we've been thinking more deeply than i think players would expect from the beta um i'm, I'm sure there's players out there's like yeah you make slice do 10 percent more damage and we're like yo but what is slice <laughs> and we're getting like re really deep with it <laughs> um so I, I'll, I'll send you something over in a minute and you can show it as something that Ryan worked on today. Um, it'll tie a bit into some hypothetical ideas for melee. Okay, yeah, uh, I'd love to. Yeah, we can go over all of those. That'd be that'd be a ton of fun. Um, but based on what you've said right there, you would say people shouldn't like panic by Saren Godbows and Greater Fury or anything because, because you guys are just you guys are straight up fucking around. Yeah, we are. In some <laughs> things, we are straight up fucking around. We are just okay. like, like, like I said. I'm, I, I don't think I've ever said YOLO in my life. I've said about 15 times this week. Okay. Um, because we we don't know when we'll get this opportunity to have this much impact with this much value again. So it's worth take, making risky tries, but there's no actual risk. Um, so yeah, we like if you're buying into a bulk right now, chance I might go, yeah, let's, let's, let's bring bulk down a bit. Let's see how it plays out next week. 
Okay, that's like, really and, good and, to know. Then, then, then you're going to be in Painesville. Like, you, you shouldn't. I think I think I put it in one of the first news posts or just after. Like, don't do long long term merches on the beta. It's not going to end well for you, most likely, because prices are just going to go everywhere. That is really good messaging because so I posted a short and it was just a four second clip of me one shotting Arch Glacier with the Saren God Bow. <laughs> and I got a comment this morning. I woke up to it that said, since you posted this short, the Saren God Bow has gone up 400 million GP. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and I did say oh, it's no. getting like I, I did say there's no way it's going to say like this. But uh, no, that's really a good messaging for people to just like don't. I think it also kind of ties into like the chill, relax, let let, let it let it happen yes. because the beta is for messing around and and you guys are going to be trying yes, out a bunch exactly. of different things. It's going to be very experimental. And I think that's that's a very good message. So thank you for that. As as much as it's like a player sandbox right now, it's just as much a developer sandbox. Like we can see what's possible, what what works, what doesn't work. Um, so yeah, there's there's going to be a lot of wacky changes. Um, and not all of them are going to stick. Um, <laughs> I, 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 spoke, I spoke to Mod Ryan, I want to say on Tuesday. I just went for the update in the uh, for the update today. We weren't sure if it was going to be the day after I went. We need to nerf something. We need to let players know that this is a beta and things are going to change. We need to nerf something. But just just the players aren't in this, this frame of mind of like everything's getting buffed and it's all buffed. Only buff. No nerf, only buff. <laughs> That's, that, that's part of the reason I was like, I'll do the potion changes right now really quick. And we'll, and we'll, and we'll, and we'll put them in and see how it goes. Like, because players need to know that, yeah, things aren't stuck in stone because they're in the beta. Things are going to change. I think that's what people like, is that the beta is so is so active. Um, like, I can I can log in, I can try stuff, and then, like, what is it, two days two days later or something? It's completely different. Um, and it's, it's probably nice as a developer because you get basically instant feedback from, from players about that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I really like that there's so many changes in the beta. Uh, I love that they're coming out really fast. I love that I can just try them. I don't have to, you know, wait for the update in however long on the actual main game to realize that, oh, maybe this might not be a good idea. Um, it's it's definitely a, a great step, I think. Um, yeah, it's super useful for that quick turnaround. <laughs> like as soon as something goes out, we're just sitting there scanning like uh, Discord, Reddit and Twitter, just seeing what people are talking about. But, oh, yeah, maybe we should do X instead of Y. Um, it's very handy for that quick turnaround to, like, if this had just been I don't know, a three, four month long project and we were just in those sorts of situations, everything's hypothetical where it's like, oh, we think players will like this thing and we think they'll like that thing. But we have no actual proof of that outside of, like, putting out a news post. But even then for players, it's hypothetical of, like, I think I'll like that thing. I don't think I'll like that thing. But until yeah. you actually try it, you don't know. Um, yeah, I mean so that's yeah, was the uh, time is, is top notch. That was the case with the FSOA beta. I think the news post came out uh, maybe a week or two before the beta, and the the community feedback was was very very negative. Uh, yeah. And then I think the vast majority of people that tried the beta was was it was very positive. Um, so having it in our hands, actually able to test it, is definitely a really nice um, thing for for feedback. I think you're going to get a lot of, of really useful feedback on that, um, and not people just kind of guessing like, "Oh, it's a nerf. I hate it," kind of thing. I think because of the broad range as well, we get more. I don't want to say honest feedback, but honest feedback. Um, mm -hmm. Like on on the on the Fasar and Animate Dead beta, we're seeing people just logging in for ten seconds, voting and logging out. Like you've not tried that. Yeah. You can see, you've not tried that. And it's like, okay, cool. So we can see the results aren't exactly what what in a situation where they're super useful now. Like we can, we can full on see that everyone's just going, log in, no, log out. But cool, thanks. That was that was helpful. Whereas this, it's like, this thing's up, this thing's down. Um, there's no just like, I don't like that. It's it's actual. I want <laughs> I want to say it's just it's just way more useful in general. Um, being able to do big broad changes. Um, uh, there is no this is a straight out nerf or this is a straight out buff like it's on both sides of the coin so from the community what's the best way to pass feedback along to you and Madarayan about this beta um, I've had tweets discord DMs, um, discord messages in actual channels like any are applicable um, RuneScape have a dedicated channel for um, the beta. Oh, in the, the RuneScape room as well. Correct? 
Yep, they're in okay. Discord. Yep, they they have both Design PVM and the RS Beta. Um, I check both. I've not I've not been messaging quite a lot in them, just letting things kind of play out naturally. Um, but then there's also PVME, which myself and Mod Ryan are scanning all the time, as well as Reddit, even Reddit posts we're looking at. Um, and if you tweet at us, we're going to read it as well. Um, so literally, a- anything is applicable. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to say Give uh, me a call if you want. No, don't, don't say that. Do not say that. I was going to say uh, it probably makes more sense to let people know, like, yeah, PVME official RuneScape Discord channel, which I'll make sure is like linked in the description and, and, and Twitter and stuff like that. I think that's probably better than Discord DMs and stuff. We'll, we'll kind of push people through <laughs> through the official channels. Probably makes a little more sense yeah. for your guys' sanity. Uh, but yeah, cool. If you're not DMing me, you're more likely to get read because um, I get so many people that's like, I'm burning my account. I'm just like, I'm not. I'm not reading this. I've not got time to read through 100 Discord messages a day of people wanting unbans. Like, no, I think that's really good to like let people know where to go to pass feedback along because I know that's something that cropped up a lot. Is like, okay, well, right, you can give feedback. Obviously, you're you're chatting with the man, but how how does anyone else? So that's really really good to know that there are tons of official channels and you guys are are scanning it a lot and looking uh, looking very very closely at it. Would you be able to take us very quickly through? Uh, so one of the changes that came through today was Berserk has been changed from an additive buff to a multiplicative buff. And, uh, last Mm -hmm. time I tried to do math, uh, everybody made fun of me. So I would like (laughs) if you could instead uh, throw your hat in the ring and and see if you can do a better job. Uh, yes. Um, it's going to be slightly more difficult without something to draw onto. Um, but I'll load a calculator up next to myself. Um, Um, so, right. You could, I mean, if you want to open, may, it, may, you may, may, maybe you can, maybe you can draw while <laughs> can I be the paint man. Okay, okay, talk. okay. Uh, be, be my scribe, if you will. In beta, added a buff calculated first DBA, so it's a thousand plus twenty percent equals one twenty percent twelve hundred. Multiplicative buff calculated next, twelve hundred plus one hundred percent is two hundred percent. That's okay, right? Yeah, equals twenty four hundred damage. Okay, yeah, yeah because twelve hundred is our one hundred percent is what yeah. we're already at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So result, result. So just from these, this is without applying other other buffs into the mix. We're doing more damage. More yep. damage uh, from Berserk. It might not be right now, but I have a feeling myself and Ryan, we're, we're going to make a move to one way or the other, where we either make everything additive or make everything multiplicative, because it's just stuff like this is a pain to have to explain to players, right? Um, you should have to look at a damage buff. So this is X percent of a damage buff. Um, obviously, players are yeah, going to favor the multiplicative good. because it's more damage. That's fair. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to know what is right because both do have their benefits. Um, example being if I'm doing a thousand damage and I'm like, oh, I'm doing 20% damage and another 20% damage. I'm now doing 40% da- more damage. Well, no, actually, you're doing 44%. So it's like, which one is actually easier to understand? I genuinely don't know. Um, both, it yeah, always both. confused me before with um, Berserk and Dragon Battle Axe. Because if you Dragon Battle Axe, it's 20% more damage. But then if you Berserk and then Dragon Battle Axe, you're actually only getting 10% now more damage. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like 10 Yeah. Um, yeah. If you, um, if, if you said the numbers out lo- loud, like, oh, Berserk is 100% more damage, and Dragon Battle Axe is 20% more damage, that's 120% more damage. Yeah. Um, whereas right now in the beta now it's the oh berserk is 20 percent more down uh, dragon battle axe is 20 percent berserk is 100 percent. that is 140 percent more damage but uh yeah. um so yeah uh we want to clean that up in some way i don't know what the exact solution will be um but just mm-hmm. have everything apply in the same way so you yeah. can easily go oh this is five percent dead on or or whatever i i think they're both equally confusing um like i don't think i don't think someone is gonna say is gonna ha- find, have an easier time adding additive percentages versus adding multiplicative percentages because you still have to add them together no matter what um mm-hmm. but yeah. i i think it makes the most sense to put everything through multiplicative because most things are already multiplicative like it just seems like there's less work because yeah, there yeah, are it'd a be, few be like, cases be, be, be that are additive for sure yeah yeah um yeah. Okay. There's there's similar things like um, Dragon Slayer Sigil stuff like that. They apply in a really weird part of the the, the combat code, and like if we move those, um, that probably annoy some players. But technically, the right thing to do to make things simpler. 
Um, so just figuring There's out also, where where all damage could live basically is the general point of this. Yeah. Yeah. There's the a lot of buffs are on hit and a lot of buffs are on cast, and I think that's a, another confusion for a, a lot of players is that all the sigils are on hit, whereas things like sunshine, berserk on cast, but then metamorphosis cast. is yeah. on hit, and it it, it, it oh. is very confusing for a lot of players. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would like all of those things to be on cast, um, mm -hmm. so that. I'm, I'm swinging my sword. I've started the action. My damage has been calculated. It doesn't matter what the, the NPC is doing over there. Um, mm -hmm. Or like if you do range, the projectile's gone, that's it. The damage is calculated. Uh, when it gets to the NPC, it can then do NPC calculation stuff like, oh, it has X shield up and it's reducing damage. That's fine. The stuff that is on me as a player, that should all be calculated together um, because, yeah, it just becomes mental arithmetic to try and figure out what's going on. Yep. The fact that chat also doesn't know about half of the things, like oh, I didn't know that was on here, or, or like it, it shows that it's definitely it's definitely confusing. Yeah, um, um, what's yeah, metamorphosis is the one that blows my mind. You're literally like you turn into a fire dude, but then it's calculated on the guy. If I combusted them, then meta my combusted now to suddenly doing a chunk more damage, even though I'd already done it. Really yeah, weird. yeah, that's that's really weird. Um, there was so. Going back to your favorite piece of code, SGB, um, almost all abilities, if you cast it with whatever perks you have, perks are calculated on cast, but SGB, some of the perks are calculated on hit. Um, yeah. So I think that was also another thing that is very confusing to players. That's because if you another did, SGB bug, yeah. Yeah, if, if you did an um, off-style SGB and then you're, you're switching um, to, to a different weapon, then, then you would assume your SGB would do the damage what, when you cast it, but it doesn't quite work like that. Um, so yeah, I think changing a lot of the buffs to all be um, additive or multiplicative, that I can't say, um, and then making them all you know on hit on cast, it will definitely um, avoid a lot of confusion and intricacies. And then and the players will hopefully be able to look at um, look at something and be like, yes, this does this much damage. I don't need to know anything else. That's it. Yeah, ex <laughs> exactly. You've, you've, you've nailed it there. Like. Just look at something, oh, it's, it's doing this thing. Oh, I know where it is. I know how that works. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like phrase of the month. It's just, it's just clean up, just, just moving things around and tidying everything up so it's, it's easier for players to understand. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Uh, I've got kind of one other thought related to we're talking about cleaning up a lot of different things. Ever interested in cleaning up bleeds to like work because we're talking about things being intuitive, and I think. Like a good example on bleeds is like the fact that they don't stack with berserker auras and they don't stack with precise or equilibrium perks and they can't crit. And those are all things that like experienced Winscape players know these things, but they're not actually listed anywhere. So is there any kind of tentative? Do you have any thoughts on on how to make that work? Um, it's actually something Ryan and I've been discussing literally today is how to deal with the problem. Um, because there's a lot of opinions on how to deal with the problem of like, oh, maybe they should apply all the damage buffs. Um, I don't personally think they should for a reason I'll go into it in a second. Um, but or, or should they be able to crit? Should they be able to do X? Um, my take is um, the fact they don't work with damage buffs actually gives them a niche. Um, whereas if they worked with Berserk as an example, it's just I'm always going to use my bleed. No matter what, it's, this is like in the future where uh, where a build might not just... Right now, melee is like you have to use the bleeds because of uh, the hood and whatever. Um, all, mm -hmm. there's, lo there's loads of power in bleeds right now, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, this is in a, in, a, in a realm where that's not not the case. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, right, right now, I want to say right now, in the future, sorry. Um, I like that you would berserk and then not use a bleed. I think that adds nice gameplay um, differences. Otherwise, it's just same rotation, do a bleed. That's wear it out, do the bleed. That's worn out, do the bleed. Whereas when it works differently with different damage buffs, it's like, I've got this damage buff. I'm not going to do the bleed just, just yet. I'm going to do this other thing. And you get these nice interactions. Um, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Um, because bleeds are kind of a status effect, it's kind of not even you doing a thing, right? I, if I hit a target and it starts bleeding, like... Does it make sense that that's doing some on hit effects? Not really. Um, does it make sense? Does it make sense even to an extent that I can soul split that? I don't know. Um, 
So we, we earlier today, literally, we were we were talking about, oh, maybe, maybe we should make a bleed hit splat um, so that <laughs> I can see what is bleed damage specifically, um, and then I can know that that interacts in different ways. Um, but it it comes down ultimately to finding a good way to define these things in game. I think the problem right now is you you read dismember, you wouldn't know that that's any different to splice. Like you just mm -hmm. oh it's damage, that's going to do the same as splice, or that's going to do the same as a as a channeled ability, right? Assault says it does four hits, dismember says it does five hits. Oh, this will do my on hit effect the same 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 amount essentially plus or minus one. Um, so the it, the issue for me is finding a way to actually display the change of information. I think it's fine to, for things to work differently as long as it's perfectly clear that they work differently. I I really like your logic with bleeds in the sense that should they even work with buffs? Because it's your target bleeding. You're not applying a bleed to them. They're they're bleeding. You're cutting them and they are bleeding or whatever. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think. Like, yeah, if we're going fully thematically sound here, I think bleeds should have a different hit splat. And I think you could even like well, an issue with bleeds, too, is all the tiny little hits. Um, it's impossible to see any oh, of and your other hits. Oh, it just spams you. So like it, it just it makes it hard to visually discern if you're even doing good damage or not. And I think those are huge issues with bleeds. You sound like you want to jump in. We we had a hypothetical earlier of what if we put a bleed controller on an NPC and whenever you use a bleed right now your bleed will start a timer and it'll it'll do its thing it'll just like hit every now and then but the bleed controller on all NPCs groups all that data together to say I dismember uh, and pup dismembers each have our own dismember timers and it sends its info to the controller and then the controller goes cool let's wham those together and just spit out one hit splat Ooh. so you just have one bleed hit splat going bang and then two cycles later it goes bang and I put a slaughter on, which is every four cycles, and it'll go, I know, on, say, cycle one, it'll go, if the dismembers hit splats together with a slaughter, and then the next two cycles, it'll do, okay, it's just the dismembers this time, show those. And then on the, the next two, it'll go, oh, that's all three again. You just get hit splats going, big, little, big, and it won't be, here's 15 bleeds in your face. Would um, that also make bleeds stack? Like, if two people use dismember? Like, is because that is also a big would, problem yeah. with bleeds. Okay. That would make them stack. I, I, I'd i love to know what Pup thinks about this, but I love that idea. Like, that fixes so many of the core issues with bleeds all at the same time, just because, yeah, especially if bleeds have their own hit splat as well. So there's a different hit splat, and you can tell, oh, that's all the bleeds being added up. Like, that would be absolutely, like, that basically fixes bleeds for me. I don't agree. Like, bleeds are almost useless in group scenarios because if someone else does it, then it's cancelled um or if you have to have only one person bleeding and then it, it becomes really annoying um so having that would be really good i think visual clarity with bleeds is really bad at the moment um especially well I, i'd say partly due to how showing hits actually works but partly just because there's so many um hits from them um i think one thing that is weird but also not that weird is because the global cooldown is three ticks and bleed, uh, the, the vast majority of bleeds hit every two ticks. If you use two bleeds back to back, they will always be an alternating ticks. So you're going to get double the amount of hit splats, um, which means that there are so many hit splats that you're seeing. Um, so there might be cool to add a kind of a system where it would it would always group those up, even if you did use them on different on different ticks. Um, that would be kind of nice. Yeah, there, there's there's a an alternative as well, um, where don't didn't go with those systems and went with the the current one, which is still one bleed of each type per mob. See if we can do something with like rolling hit splats, so where it's like, oh my dismembers on it, and it goes like 100, and it's going to do another 100, but instead of disappearing and showing new hit splat, it just goes cool. That's now on 200, and it just rolls up as the bleeds going mm. along. Um, so you do, again, you don't get that spam of loads of hit splats. Mm -hmm. You just have one off to the side or something that's just rolling up slowly um yeah yeah as long as it was known that that was the bleed thing um yeah exactly. then that would that would be really nice um i do so one thing with the current way that hits are displayed um are there any thoughts to changing the way they're displayed or the amount of hits that are displayed um because you can only have um six hits 
hit six hit splats on a target every two ticks. Um, mm -hmm. So it, what happens is if you hit six hit splats on tick one, there won't actually be any hit splats on tick two, even if you did an ability there. Um, and I think especially with Blood Reaver and Poison being quite significant in the current game, a lot of hits are not shown at all. Uh, and I think that is very detrimental for the visual clarity of players trying to learn, oh, this ability hit this much because they, they can't actually see what the ability hit. Yep, yep no, I agree. Um, yes, we want to do something with hit splats. Um, the issue is hit splats aren't a content thing. They're not in, they're not, not particularly content changeable. They're done in engine. Mm. Um, and like upping the number of them, that's all that's all engine, so we'd need support for it. It's whether or not we could get that in a meaningful amount of time to make changes on the beta. Um I wasn't necessarily just talking use beta, beta, just the future yeah, of yeah. the game. I oh, guess. in general, yes, we want to do something. Mm -hmm. Um there are some things that should be handled content side, which is things like the Blood Reaver, in my opinion. I don't think the Blood Reaver should spit out on every single hill you do. It should, it should just like group them up to a thousand, then fire a big hit, and then group them up to a thousand, then fire a big hit. I don't really see outside of the current poison thing. I don't see a reason for it to spit out loads of little hits. Um, I don't think it's actually very meaningful, and all it does is add noise. Uh, yep. And poison, poison again, that. that could do. If we could do a rolling hit splat for poison or a poison controller again. Um, similar to bleeds, could just work the same way and just re just full on content side. We just reduce the number of hit splats so you can actually see what's going on, um, or even add options to yeah. only see your own hit splats. Because blood reaver and poison are, are interesting because you obviously want them active and you want them to to know that they're active and that they're working, but you also never actually care it's to kind see of them. Kind info, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a sub, there's a sub point that I'm kind of skirting around, which is like blood reaver and poison just shouldn't interact. Like they, it doesn't make any sense. That it's full on yeah, a bug. Uh, um, yeah, so I mean, even if you're doing bug, a, yeah, yeah, I believe that is a f official bug. Yes. Yeah, it's hundred percent a bug. Um, it's the for whatever reason the blood reaver code goes through the player, so then it starts doing all the poison stuff um, when it should just go. In. I'm a summoning from here. I can, <laughs> I'm my own creature. I can figure out what I'm doing. That's what it should be doing. Um, but it's not. It's going yo. I'm going to go through your code and I'm going to run some of your stuff. You're telling me the entire poison meta is a bug. Yeah, it's a bug. Oh, 100%. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, chances are we will try something with Reva on the beta. Um, I don't think myself nor Ryan particularly like it. And I actually, outside of the damage it deals, I don't think I actually really like it. Um, yes, it feels good to do loads of damage, but do you like the play style? What is the play style? There isn't a play style there. I put on Soul Split and I put on Cinder Bane, and that's it. Um, and see if we can actually do something meaningful with it instead. I give Poison some sort of play style within ranged. Yeah, I do. I do sometimes like the the interaction of just the way Blood Reaver works, ignoring Poison, just the, the normal way, because it does allow for some cool interactions where you purposefully start on low HP and then purposefully heal yeah, yeah, in yeah. many, many different ways. Um, yeah. I think that's really nice. Um, that, I think was, that was it separately as nice. Use. Yeah, it, it was. It was. I I want to be a drain tank and get some extra damage out of it. That's why it's like it heals you as well, right? It's just like it's supposed to be a big meat sack that you just heal for everything. Um, like, is it more meaningful if we reduce the number of hits, make it scale up so it's like every thousand it fires a big hit, then up the damage of it, make, make it an actual drain tank damage familiar rather than this weird poison halfway house. And then we just make a poison familiar that, that works in a more meaningful way, in a more well-designed way than Reaver. Mm -hmm. I, I, to be fair, I think the thing that makes the Reaver kind of overpowered is not only is it the most overpowered healing familiar, but it also is the best DPS familiar in a lot of cases. I think it's more the exactly. combo, but yeah. I was going to say the idea of a poison hit splat build where you're ranging and you're trying to do as many hit splats as possible and it changes the way that you use abilities. Like, I actually really like that. And I like that mm -hmm. it does kind of passive damage. It's not about your DP, like your, your DPS rotation becomes how many hit splats can you do? And I actually, I really yeah. enjoy that. So I just, I wanted to clarify that, like, I would love to, if, if changes are going to be made to the Reaver or any of that, 
Um, I would love it if like that functionality, whether it's through a different familiar or through changes to whatnot, like I do actually, like it feels like a real build and, and a lot of RuneScape <clears throat> combat doesn't. So I was just going to say like, that is one thing that I quite like. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, builds is always something I bang on about um, because we have this problem. It's not really a problem. I suppose it is. In, in RuneScape, it's, progression is just very linear, right? It's just like, oh, I go from tier 90 to tier 92. There's, there's, there's nothing else. Why is there not another tier 92 set? And if I have a specific tier 90 weapon, it now works better with the tier 92 set. Um, so now there's more different stuff that I want instead of just, oh, we're just, go, we're just going upwards. Everything's going up. Um, mm -hmm. You can kind of see this a bit in Necro. It's There's a start of it there between Conjure's Souls and Necrosis, um, where uh, Raziel actually offers all three through the Arm Guard Lantern and Outfit. But the hope would be in the future that we have a Lantern that is Conjure based. So now it's still tier 95, like the Raziel one. Now, if I'm wearing the Conjure armor, I want the Conjure Lantern because together they synergize really well. Um, at the same time also do a tier 95 soul set um so i don't want to wear the raziel set now if i'm using the soul lantern because they synergize really well suddenly you have multiple tier 95 gear options instead of us sitting down in the year and going we do tier 100 it's like mm -hmm. no we have so much more meaningful stuff we can do now rather than just going number bigger um so yeah, that, yeah I that's where that. I, I would like us, us to go to is is more build focused mm -hmm. yeah i i Personally, I'm a big fan of the tier 90 power necromancy gear because it has the ability, like the 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 death effect, that the tier 95 doesn't. And th there aren't many cases where there is a p meaningful reason to use a lower tier item. Um, yeah. So I thought that effect, although it was, you know, it probably wasn't um, maybe in a, a massive plan, or it's not like it's always oh, a separate tier 90 build, but it's it's a nice little uh, effect that the tier 90 armor has that makes it still useful for a lot of places. Yes, it, it could become more prominent in the future. Say we, we make an upgrade path for the old armor that makes that tier 95 as well, and you do something extra with Deathmark. Now there's a build that does stuff with Deathmark. Um, mm -hmm. Suddenly I want a different corner that does stuff with Deathmark too. Um, like there's options there instead of just let's just make the numbers bigger. If uh, if there's a plan to kind of do more builds, which by the way, mm -hmm. I like for a lot of reasons, but there's one thing that I really don't like about it. And the kind of the follow-up question is, would you ever create a better invention interface and perking system? Because it is freaking miserable. Everybody hates it. Most players don't even use perks. Like I, I, I'm sure you have the data on this, but like, Genuinely, more players than not who are trying to get into PVM don't have perks at all because they're too confusing. Mm -hmm. So would you ever make an interface where you could just display all of the perk combos that people use? And then it's almost like a repository where you click on it and it tells you what the combo is, what the chance is, how to get the item. Like to me, just a, a super simple, easy perk interface where it's like, oh, you're looking for crackling. Click on it. These are all the crackling combos and how to get them mm -hmm. because to me if you're if you're building out a situation where people need more perks um i i, I think it's a, it's an area where i think people don't really talk about it but a lot of people need help with perks yeah i i agree completely um yes and no yes and no um yes i would like something like that um i imagine it'd be very technical because invention is very technical um as a side point in what you said um, which is about perks and generals and I, I just don't like the majority of invention perks right now um, I don't like the generally speaking the invention perk meta, meta, meta is you just run the same perks on everything for the, for most cases yes. right um, I agree I Massively. don't think that should be a thing um, I don't see why it's not oh I'm X mage build so now I want the X mage build perk that works really well with it then that range over there is not going to use it um, so if I have the armor, then I'm going to put that perk on it. I'm never going to need another perk. Um, I think the majority of our perks right now are incorrect for a number of ways. Um, it's stuff like flanking, which admittedly it's not that much of an issue right now because we've kind of mitigated the number of one tick switches, but flanking nonetheless, like I don't like that. Oh, this one ability does an extra thing. Um, it's not quite as bad as some other ones because I could do, I don't know, impact and deep impact so now it's on for two abilities but still 
Um, I don't see why something like flanking you couldn't have as you just do more damage of attacking something from behind. It's just a general play pattern effect. Um, if I'm doing gr group content and I'm my role is DPS, I'm going to put this on because the boss is going to face the tank. Um, not this. I'm going to switch on for one tick whilst I'm standing underneath it to to do a, do an impact or something. That's that's so backwards. Um, at the same time, there's there's a load of perks that could just have uses that don't right now. Um, spoken yeah. about ultimatums in the past and wanting to do something with it. Um, but players wanted it to stack with the full capes. Uh, Sorry, the Zuck capes, the full capes, the internal. Um, but like, that's not really feasible because the Zuck capes are already pretty strong. Uh, but why couldn't that have an interesting effect that plays around a build where you want to rotate through ultimates in some way? Um, and just do more interesting stuff like that. Um, sorry, to go back to your thing, I kind of wandered off there. Uh, yes, I would like to do something that makes it easier to know how to get a specific perk. Um, it's just a lot of work and I think there's more impact in getting the perks we have better at the moment because I feel like most of them suck. Okay. No, that's that's totally reasonable. <laughs> um, I've got one more quick one for you and then possibly a very brief tech demo. And then I'd love to see what uh, Mod Ryan has been has been cooking up and we got some leaks. Um, so the next question I wanted to ask you about, because we're talking about visual clarity, the buff bar kind of sucks. I think we we can yep. all we can all agree. Um, so I guess from your perspective, is there any plan to? And if, if if there is, what what what's the plan to make the buff bar not suck? Um, there's a there's a starting point here, and there's the secondary point. Um, the starting point is yes, we should do something to make the buff bar not suck. Whether that is allowing you to decide to not display certain buff if they they don't matter to you um i think of examples but i have bone shield on right now why do i need that on my buff bar i know that i've got to toggle on I'd, i i could use that space and like uh create a barge in certain scenarios i don't want that on my buff bar um we could add some customization there in letting you choose what you want to display and letting you choose the priorities for them so what's at the front what's at the back um i would like to do that but more importantly i'd like to do more stuff like necro where it's on you in in game space um it's like having the soul the soul stacks visible um on your actual heads up um with the adrenaline bar and whatnot um but that moves more into the other styles not having their own resources so it doesn't really necessarily do anything right now um and should as an example melee have its own resource like the soul stacks like should melee have rage and rage augments your abilities in different way. Um, that's something I think would be really good to add. <laughs> Sorry, I realize I, 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 I keep taking your point and just going off on some random No, you're tangent. good, you're good, you're good. Um, but could the identity of the abilities be split based on if they have these resource systems, if they don't have a resource system and that's its thing, um, or how the resource system interacts with how you play? Like if I'm at from above 10 rage, my next ability is augmented in some way and Berserk sticks me at 100 rage. It's not a damage boost anymore. I'm just always at 100 rage. So now Assault hits 15 times or something. Uh, okay. And, and and looking to that for gameplay changes and then we display that above your head and we don't need all these, these ridiculous needless buffs that are appearing. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I'd like to do something about the buff bar. I would like to do more and make meaningful meaningful stuff appear on the player but styles need meaningful stuff to appear on the player in place of the current useless buffs that we have okay um, i guess that's the long and short of it so if you'd be willing to open the stream i have a little tech demo for you mm -hmm. let's imagine i want five buffs on my screen like i want my dps prayer my overload darkness poison grimoire right i want i want those buffs on my screen because they're very pertinent and then i want a gap and then behind this gap i would like a dren pot some special attacks if i get stunned by a red golem behind this gap i would like some defensive abilities because defensive abilities are friends so let's imagine that now, let's imagine I want to completely customize 
how many buffs I'm showing per row. Uh, but I also want a warning whenever the ones that run out, you'll see it here, run out just so that, you know, I want to make sure my grimoire is always on, right? Um, so let's imagine that. I can make it whatever size I want. I can save presets and profiles for every boss. And by the way, this was made by Nadia, uh, who's in chat. And I just want to give a massive shout out to, to, to them because they've been working on this forever and they put a ton of time in to make this absolutely incredible. Imagine this. So now my old buff bar is completely gone, right? So, oh, I need to overload. Oh, wait a second, my grimoire is not on. If I get stunned by a volcanic, let's say I use anticipate. Freedom. And it's yeah, always solid. permanently fixed. I can change the size. I can change the order. I can put it wherever I want instead of the old buff bar. I can size it up. I can size it down. And it's completely hidden. So would you like to, to me, I would love to see first off this plugin. I'll, I'll link it in the description down below. Anyone can access it. Uh, Nadia has done an absolutely fantastic job with it. Um, it's it, you can add it to the all one toolkit, but I guess what I'm what I'm trying to point out is, is there any universe where stuff like this here? Let me cast darkness. Let me apply weapon poison could ever just get first party in game support, because to me, this is a million times better than the old crappy buff bar without having to change how the buffs work. It's just better in, in a lot of different ways. And there, let me use my special attacks and you can see the cooldowns instantly. Oh, my Adren pot's available. Let's let's guzzle that. Um, so I guess, yeah, I, I guess where I'm getting at with that is, would you ever look to put something like this in the game? Um, let me use Living Death and it's gonna show it perfectly. Yeah, that's solid. Um, this is what I'd like our buff bar to be, I think is what I would say. Because um, yeah, there's so much value in that and just having everything even in a static position is super helpful, right? Um, I don't know the logistics even on getting like third party stuff in game. Um, I can't really comment on that. But yeah, 100%, this is the sort of thing our buff bar should be. Um, this is top, top notch. Okay. And yeah, just to as a comparison um, to what the other buff bar, like the normal buff bar looks like. So basically what it's doing is it's just reading my regular buff bar and it's interpreting it. Um, but the regular buff bar, everything on it moves every time I use anything. So it's just about impossible yeah. to follow. Um, yeah. So anyway, you're so you're a fan of this and you can click through it like it's. Yeah. Anyway, so I just yeah, I wanted very, to show that out good. really quick and get your thoughts on it, because I know Nadia has been working so hard on this and it's just like to me, it's completely game changing for visual clarity. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so you're a fan of this. Would you ever consider using this? Uh, yes, if I was doing a lot of PVM, without a doubt. Um, I don't have the headspace for PVM right now. <laughs> cool. Yeah, enough. no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I it's night and day really, isn't it? Um, it's it's very, so much better. Good. Um, I've got one more super quick one for you. Have you seen the necromancy overlay? I have. That is also very cool. Yeah. So this was also made by Nadia, of course, because she's just absolutely goaded with the sauce. And I'll just show this to you very, very quickly because I know we've got stuff to leak. Um, we've got some leaks to get into. But yeah, I just I really I wanted to very quickly just just, just shout out her and what she's doing because she's kind of single-handedly tackling the visual clarity problem in this game. <laughs> um, so this necromancy overlay, uh, just to really quickly show it, and this is also just, you can add it to the Alt-1 toolkit. It's available for, for anyone to use completely for free. And how this one works is, it is going to keep track of all of my stacks. So I get a soul, shows up on the bar. I use bloat, and it's counting down. Uh, on the bottom there, those are my necrosis stacks. It's showing them too. Let's do some conjures. It's going to tell you exactly all of the conjures and how long is left on them as well. Three souls. Um, let's get some more necrosis stacks. Now I've got eight. So now the color changes. So I know that I can use finger of death. Um, and this is something that I found immensely useful as well. So anyway, just all that to say, like there are in-game kind of third party solutions to a lot of these visual clarity issues. And I just, I wanted to showcase them to, to you in particular, because well, when you guys are looking for inspiration on, on what needs to change with some of these systems, I would love to see a job gauge like this for every combat style. So imagine a range one that keeps track of your bulk stacks or keeps track of your, um, mm -hmm. 
I don't know, your your bolt cooldowns or stuff like that. And I just think like here, I'll use missiles arrows. and it's instantly gone. Death spray arrows. And and to me in the future, absolutely love to see a series of, you know, job gauges like this for every style, for the specific buffs that belong there, that's completely customizable. Um, kind, kind of like these ones. But yeah, anyway, I just wanted to really quickly mm -hmm. show you those because, yeah. Yeah, no, very cool. Um, I think it's a general point of how much inspiration you can take from the community. Uh, that sort of thing is just sick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, outside of that, is it time to leak some stuff? Go ahead. Uh, do you want to load up the video I just sent you? I would absolutely uh, love to. Do you want to make it full screen? Okay, and there aren't uh, any JMods in chat, right, who are going to get angry at us? Can I tell them what this file's called? Uh, I don't even know what this file's called. <laughs> it's called uh, Melee uh, PVM Rewrite. Oh, yeah. Um, so, just before we play it, uh, today, um, off the basis of me, myself and Mod Ryan, we were up a little late just talking about Melee for a little bit. Um, and the whilst we have rewritten all the abilities, We've not rewritten the core system. Um, so this is a little bit of a rewrite by Mod Ryan of the core system. Um, but also it's a bit of a demonstration and a hypothetical of should the what's the word? Should the identity of dual world be different from two hand? Should they play differently? Um, because like right now, destroy, it just feels the same as the salt, right? It's just a channel that does its own thing. Um so if you want to play it, um, and this okay. is one of our ideas of an example of what dual world melee could be or could do. Okay. Um, and then I can. Okay. So play the whole thing. Yeah. Go for it. Play it. All right. Let's go. Um, cool. So he's about to destroy. Oh, what's that? Destroys it's double fast. hit plan on every hit. It's fast using... AF. Yeah. Um, so this is us trying a dual world do double hit splats on everything but we've slightly toned it down damage. Um, this is with multiple cleanups in the system as well. Um, but like, as an example, we, we were talking a bit about Lengs, and we was uh, like, oh, what is what is the identity of Lengs? What should it be? Um, previously, it raised your hit caps, but it didn't, it didn't necessarily match the, the visual identity of the weapons or dual wield. Um, players like this, the big unga bunga hit really hard, but the identity doesn't necessarily match a flourish of dual wielding. Um, so on that, do we do we make two hand in the really big unga bunga hit some really big hit splats, and then dual wield is let's do lots of little hit splats, but for roughly the same damage. Um, this was off the back of us. We were talking about lengths and was like, um, what, what should the passive? What should the special do? Neither of us particularly liked. Are they just let you do hurricane it's quite boring it's like they could uh, purely as an example they could empower you and now all your hits do an extra 200 damage on hit so suddenly that destroy that you're seeing there that would hit eight times in total that now gets way more damage compared to the the two hand slow style um but the two hand slow style could be uh your next hit is doubled and then you do a thing and it's your next two hits are doubled um so that doesn't really work for the small hit. So then you get these synergies between the two the two differences. Okay. Um, just just the, just just sort of the idea of the hypotheticals we're we're thinking about and how to differentiate even different parts of the same style. Because um, yeah, like melee has thirty abilities and they all feel the same. What? Why is that? Yeah. What at its core can we change about different abilities? Yeah, there's a, a lot of comments from uh, Project Combat. Um, that came through about the identity of different combat styles. And I think one of their suggestions was like, let's make dual wield melee, like feel like precision and lots of little hits and maybe bleed identity through that. And then two eight should be like the big hits and the berserk and all that. And I just think in general, carving out an identity for the styles is really good. Like even like, here's the thing, like this change to melee, it isn't, it, it isn't right now, it isn't massive. It's just, okay, everything's duplicated in dual wields, but making them feel a little different i think actually does hold a lot of value because one of the like biggest issues with the eoc when it first came out is like okay now every dragon weapon is the same so what what's the point in having yeah, any difference in them? um yeah, and yeah. i think where um, the combat beta like the previous one kind of went wrong a little bit is it was too much all at once to make every single weapon completely work yeah. in a different way like that that adds so much uh 
you processing difficulty to so many people, but yes, exactly. Yeah. That's definitely really um, nice. Like it definitely melee nowadays definitely loses some of the identity that it used to have where you'd, you know, you'd be also attacking with dual or you'd switch to your rune two H and you do massive hits. Um, and I've always found it slightly weird that the, the bleeds always generally have come from, from two H with the, with the spear. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas thematically, you'd expect you know Jewel to be doing um, um, smaller hits, um, but yeah, that, that change does seem really nice, and you could definitely build on a lot of that with with um, abilities that are more Jewel two H specific. I know that's an interesting one because then it introduces Switchscape and stuff, but yeah, that could that could be really interesting. Um, I think I think I like... there's, there's mitigations to the Switch problem as well that mm -hmm. just haven't been done in the past. Um, things like having sets that specific like specifically you want a set on and you want a pair of weapons on to do this different stuff whereas right now mm. it's like i'm gonna put on just the spear and the spear does everything for me like that's part of the core problem of the switchscape right it's like it's too much impact on singular bits of gear like singular mm. bits of gear are too good and they don't synergize enough with other bits of gear um i think yeah like the uh the yeah, uh, like said, the, the helm the abyssal helm is just it's just yes. this one specific helm that you put on that feels slightly yep. odd. It's the cinder um, banes of headwear. Yes. <laughs> yes, literally. Yeah, exactly. Um, so like, yeah. yeah, a redistribution of power, I think is, would be would be a good way of mitigating the switching. Um, and as, as much as people don't like shared cooldowns on different things, shared cooldowns are a powerful tool to do stuff with. Um, mm -hmm. Well, not even necessarily shared cooldowns, shared abilities. Um, so myself and Mod Ryan were we, were we were going through the different animations because we want to we want to clean up and make hit timings all correct and stuff. Um, <laughs> and we were laughing that uh, all wield assault player visually hits five times. You like swing, yes, swing, I know this. swing, big hit. Then two hand, they hit three times. And it's just swing, swing, yes. big hit. Why can't that be two abilities in one? If you dual wielding, you hit, you hit also five different. times. Yes. Um, yeah, so why can't it be Assault, first line, and then it goes dual wield effect, two hand effect. So now that plays differently for two styles, but they share the same cooldown. So there's no switching involved. Um, mm -hmm. huh. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I don't get the, I literally don't have the option to switch for that. Um, mm -hmm. except, except out of some weird circumstance where the dual wield version is better for my the rest of my build, even though I'm two handing, but then that that's a, a conflict of builds which just shouldn't be a thing mm -hmm. yeah I, I remember i always liked destroy and hurricane sharing the cooldown because there was always that choice of do you want an instant hitting big ability or do you want sustained damage over a, a amount of seconds um and obviously that's a change that's you know now not the not the how it works um but i i, I personally quite like those choices of should i use this ability or this ability um, it, it does have detrimental um, issues where, like for example, Greater Conk and Sonic Wave, there is almost no reason to use Sonic Wave because one is substantially better than the other. Um, but if if they're balanced in a way that is is good, where they're, they're they're pretty similar, but they're very different in terms of when you'd want to use them, I think that's a really a really good thing to aim for. I, I, that's a really good point, and I loved. Um, like old Destroy and Hurricane, it's a perfect example of exactly that because the average damage per tick on Destroy, like it was better. For sustained damage, Destroy was better than Hurricane, even with the time loss because it channels. But in certain situations, you want the damage right now. Maybe it's Telos doing a Tendril or a DPS check or bring him down, or maybe it's the last tick of a Berserk rotation where you don't have time for the full Destroy. And I just think those kind of decisions, like, when I think about it now, allowing both of them at the same time where there's no decision to make, I think actually makes you lose a little bit. I mean, Resonance and Divert is another example too. Um, but yeah, no, I would just totally agree with what Pup said there, that that's, that's really, uh, that's something that I would actually love to see more of. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, I agree. Um, Pup raised a point about g Conk and Sonic, which obviously was a, a big thing at the time, right? <laughs> where g Conk is so overwhelmingly Wrong, there's no reason to Sonic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Nick's trying to start like, let, 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 let me use both. And it's like, oh no, you've, just, <laughs> you've already said G Kong's way too strong. You can't have this other stronger thing with it. 
Um, mm -hmm. it, the core issue there is kind of what I described before, which is like, you should have more things that synergize with the Sonic so that you have a reason to choose between the two. The damage of Sonic yeah. itself doesn't actually need to be any higher. It's already decent damage. If there was something else that worked with the flow stacks it gives you, so that you get these synergies that go along in a, in a staff two hand style, like that could then compete with just a, a crit focused G-Conk. Um, so it's, 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 it's building up those identities within styles themselves um, mm -hmm. and taking it kind of, taking everything back to the drawing board and seeing what we can do in a meaningful way for yeah. each of the styles as a whole. Yeah, I know, um, I don't know what iteration, because there's been a few iterations of Greater Sonic, but uh, at one point it synergized really, really well with Greater Chain um, because mm -hmm. of the way the buff stacks. Um, and it meant that there was actually a reason to use Greater Sonic as opposed to Greater Concentrated Blast. Um, yep. If you were in a boss fight or scenario where you had a lot of mobs. Um, and well, I think that was quite yeah. nice. Um, so more things like that so are I, I, really good. More like one, two combos. Um, I think mm -hmm. it's still ten, like it's still advantageous to do that. Um, mm -hmm. There was a point where G Sonic was like a flat damage now it's percentage but it still scales with greater chain so if you're surrounded by like eight mobs you'd get on like 80 percent damage buff for a couple of cycles mm -hmm. um but yeah no i agree those type of one two combos are really good um so say there's yeah. another two hand magic ability that plays into the flow stacks and it like doubles the amount of flow you have and then if you get back around to the next g sonic you're now up to like triple the amount of flow and then you have something that spends all that to do a load of damage um, mm -hmm. That then suddenly feels way different to Dual World, where it's just like you're doing these rapid crits. Um, yeah, no, there's there's a lot of opportunity to do cool stuff like that. Yeah, because well, because back in the day, there used to be Needle Strike, where you'd all you'd always want to be using that before your big thresholds. That was kind of the backbone yeah. of Death Swiftness rotations um, because the damage increase. And then Greater Dazing Shot came out, and it was it was quite interesting because although they don't share a cooldown, um, they were short cooldown abilities such that you generally used one or the other um and greater dazing shot obviously benefiting with the stacks and sort of the wound and, and whatever so that although they don't share cooldowns felt very similar it was the the one two combo of do i do dazing shot and sort the wound or needle strike in my big threshold yeah um and i feel like players like those as long as they are simple enough that they make sense to everyone yeah agreed <laughs> interesting random tangent um but salt the wounds never actually worked how it was supposed to work um, something myself and Mod Ryan discovered is there was a case in the ability of how much damage you do per cycle and it just skipped the first case so it should have always done way more damage than it used to do on the uh, on the bleed, bleed I wonder why it was really bad yeah that's the, the, that is genuinely why it was just really bad um, I think Mod Ryan might have just turned it on for the beta I think it might be in the patch notes mentioning it um, so it might suddenly be like a wacky strong ability, but we'll find out if players actually actually mm -hmm. try it out. Huh. Yeah, one um, one topic, um, going back to the, the current combat beats, um, an example being ranged, are you, a worry, are, are you worried that some styles might fall into a rhythm where you're using only a few abilities, but you have access to lots? For example, I think like a ranged death swiftness, you're probably only using... Um, Greater Ricochet, Piercing Shot, and then the, the three um, special attacks such as Bulg, Debo, and um, SGB. Obviously that's in a, a specific scenario, but are you worried that not using lots of abilities is an issue? Or are you happy that players are choosing to use the good abilities and ignoring the less useful ones? So it's kind of a double barrel answer of I don't think it matters too much if one style only uses a couple of abilities. Um, I think it's a problem for all styles only use a couple of abilities and there's no difference in the gameplay feel or difference in the difficulty even. Like I think some styles should just straight out be more difficult to master than others. Um, there should be a difficulty range there. Um, but the sort of thing you've just described, I think is again, it's an identity problem. Arguably ranged has the most identity out of any of the styles, but I think Still mm -hmm. don't think it has enough um, to the point where, yeah, like if I look through the range book now, like there's so many abilities here that, like you said, you just don't use because what they don't synergize with anything and they just do a low amount of damage. Um, yeah. So if there if there was different synergies, different effects that we could draw into, we 100% could increase that. Um, I think 
a big part of that is something I said earlier, which was like make the baseline simple. Like if ranged had an auto attack, the players could just click, bang, bang, bang. Then we can start doing wacky, complex abilities um, that draw into things. Um, I had an idea of like, what if range just had an ability that was draw an extra arrow, and you, you just pull out an extra arrow for your next attack. But then that that changes how different attacks work. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you if you incend shot with two arrows out, the explosion is three times as big. Something like that. Um, if you snapshot with two arrows out, I know it it, it it hits twice and then does a bleed afterwards. Um, or if you bombard, it just leaves an explosion there for ages. Um, and make make making the style have a core identity um like range yeah it, it could be all about drawing extra arrows um mm -hmm. rather than that'd be interesting rather than right now the issue you describe is purely there's no identity there to draw from so it's just use the big abilities um yeah break it down to i think because it's like greco is just big numbers right that's all it is yeah when, when you take it yeah it, it does more damage it does more effect because mm -hmm. a lot of range synergizes I don't know if it was planned but synergizes insanely well um, like the bulk spec oh, sorry, the, the bulk um, weapon needing 8 stacks for the damage double and then Gricko is 7 hits and then obviously a lot of range is kind of lots of small um, hitting abilities with many hits like Gricko rapid fire pissing shot now um, which synergizes so well with ECB and I think a lot of range there are quite a few things that synergize really well and then everything else is basically irrelevant um yes whereas i think i think melee is in an odd scenario where everything is okay i say everything there's a lot of abilities but the vast majority <laughs> of melee is quite decent but anything that synergizes you're always having some kind of trade-off like do i use the scorch yeah. or the ling do i use the gloves of passage or do i use cinnamon like there's always some kind of trade-off whereas i think with range you definitely get um much more of a synergy between the things you own yeah um i think that's because arranged had at least some form of identity to begin with um which is like ruby bolts they clearly work better when you hit lots of times because you have more chance of triggering them um mm -hmm. it had some abilities that already hit often like rapid fire hits eight eight times i think eight times yes um yeah and then uh and then ryan made greco which hits with chroming like seven times um, yep. so when I made Bulg, there was already a lot to draw into of like this style likes rapid hitting. Let's let's play into that. Um, mm -hmm. But then it kind but of then you got Dark Bow. Has, it has yes, a, a massive this, hit. This, so. this, this, is, this is this is part of the problem of Bulg has a bit of an identity crisis where it doesn't know if it likes rapid hits or it doesn't know if it likes big hits. Mm -hmm. um, at the time when I made it, I was like, oh, it's fine. It can it can do two things at once. I don't necessarily agree with that now. Um, the idea at the time was the bow part of it was like, oh, you want to do one big hit. You're like you got snipe right, that's really thematic. You're, you're literally aiming up for one big hit. You have dark bow, you're doing two really big hits. Um, so the bulk should play into that. But at the same time, I was like, oh, but it has all these abilities that also hit really often. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of created a bit of an identity crisis there when if i made it nowadays i would play into one or the other like if it was crossbows i probably would have just made it the the rapid part not make it have the um the bit where it stores some of your damage and uses it it would just been like a fixed amount of damage when you triggered it so all you want to do is hit really fast trigger it a lot yeah um but whereas nowadays if it keeping it as a bow i would have probably removed the multi-stack part of it and have it like every 10 seconds your next hit is doubled or something so it's like 10 seconds cool dark bow do a really big hit cool 10 seconds snipe do a really big hit um to remove the identity crisis of the singular weapon um the mage kind of has that as well between Fasara and and greater concrete where it's like oh Fasara, i'm the crit thing and it's like but the, yeah. the best crit things dual world what what you did to me um i think yeah, i specifically have become much more aware of those identity crises within within styles and within abilities and uh, it's something i'm trying to actively avoid um mm -hmm. a real question it is like do we do anything about Fistoa or g -Conk? do we try to line them up in some way um like should g -Conk no longer be crit and two hand be crit that's maybe something we could try out should um by the last guardian only do one of the effects and not the other um again something we can try out um, i was gonna just quickly mention on that point 
I feel like the G Conk effect makes more sense as a 2H effect and the G Sonic, because when you're thinking about duels, you're thinking accuracy, precision, and that's what mm -hmm. G Sonic does. I'm not it, saying it swap does. the two, I, yeah. but I'm saying thematically, like the one that gives you a bunch of crits should probably be the 2H. Yep. No, I agree. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be against trying that sort of thing. There's there's like <laughs> pretty hard because there's so many ideas floating around at once. Like I was thinking, um, should a staff even be a two hand weapon? Should it just be a main hand weapon? And there's, now there's staff abilities and wand abilities. And like you're holding mm -hmm. your, you're going back to the day of holding your staff and holding your book, right? I think that would be <laughs> really cool. Um, that would be cool. And magic as a style, something that's different about magic is it just doesn't have a have a, a two hand. It's just dual wield. Um, and that, mm. that there, that would also remove it because now suddenly I can G Conk with my uh, with my Fasoa, Um and yeah, you'd get identity through different ways. Um, it's just interesting. There's so much potential. It's just so hard, like between yeah. us deciding on well, between us and the players deciding on what the right path is. I think it goes back to the well, because because go, going back to the uh, the melee thing, it's like melee almost feels backwards to me as well because the I know it's not the same now because of the beta but the length spec means that you have you know a much higher hit cap and you're doing massive hits with your lengths but they're they're the jeweled ones and then yeah exactly the, the, the spear is the the 2h one and it, and then the the easy k is the 2h and but then they're small hits and <laughs> it, it does almost feel like they should be not saying swapped but it's backwards yeah right? they, yeah they yeah. are backwards um so it's, mm -hmm. it's figuring out what's the easiest way to amend their identities without pissing off players of like oh mm -hmm. now this thing's shit now this thing's good right it's like how how do you flip them but in a meaningful way where it doesn't feel like now all my stuff doesn't work together yeah that's a hard um, one because it's it's one thing choosing an identity for a style and a like a like jeweled melee could be an identity but getting that into a position where the players are happy and there aren't a million changes is is tough yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um we'll get there though it'll be We'll get there. We'll, we'll try out some fun stuff and, and see what players like and what they don't like. Um, yeah, that's the whole point. I mean, from me, right? the the beta has been great so far. I think every, everyone I've talked to that's tried it has thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, some of the changes have made perfect sense, and it, it almost it's almost a change that you didn't think about until now. But now that it's happened, you're like, why wasn't this a thing before? <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I some, someone on Reddit earlier replied to something I said. Um, it was like. Oh, this thing's been in the game for twelve years. Why are you changing it? And it's like the fact the fact that something's been in the game for twelve years isn't a reason for it to exist. Like it's that's not good enough. Bad for twelve years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like don't you don't leave something that's not good just because it's been there for ages. Like that's just gonna result in bad gameplay and a bad experience for everyone. Um a bad experience that yeah. you don't even know like you're having a bad experience, right? It's like the amount of bugs that I look over like the last year or two that we fixed that you, you kind of forget that have even been fixed now. Um, stuff like <laughs> when you create a barge, if you clicked the target, you'd lose it, right? It's a, yeah. That could never have been a thing, but players just went, oh, it's just how it works. Like the fact that it's already so much better, but it's still really bad is like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the fact that you've rolled out, like in this beta, let's say a complete overhaul of every ability in the game, plus 25 other changes that make combat more intuitive. And there are still... 30 more things that are unintuitive is like it, it really like it, it makes me really happy that this is happening but also it's like it, it just you, you kind I of step back even and you got go, this bad whoa yeah yeah no it's, like, it's, what it's the crazy fuck happened? also i've um, decided yeah, yeah. that um yeah one-handed fasoa is a great idea it looks really nice you just I, made uh, it small <laughs> no, 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 no i didn't make it small at all i just messed yeah. around in the in the model viewer oh, I, I like the book and the fasoa it. yeah it's kind of cool right Cause like if someone I don't know if someone's silly you can throw the book at them you can bash them with the like yeah no anyway I'm just putting that out there that I think uh, you could do it. One thing that I did want to bring up that someone in chat actually mentioned is um, necromancy is obviously a very powerful style, um, mm -hmm. and obviously the changes that have happened have been very good for it. But once the combat beta ends in whatever iteration it is, the other styles will probably receive a buff. Are you worried about the ease of killing bosses? Uh, not in the sense that it's accessible, but more that you're probably doing significantly more damage than you were before. 
Um, is that something that you're wary of and you're thinking, oh, maybe we need to up the HP or is it something where you're you're happy with the current bosses that are in game, but your your sites are looking forward to the, the newer bosses? It's a really tricky scenario. Um, it is, yes. Something what Ryan has mentioned before is upping the HP on bosses if like players come out as too buffed. I'm more on the side of I would like everything to be way smoother in the game for combat to feel way better for the player not necessarily to be any stronger at all just to be roughly where they were before um what if they're not say it's like yeah we can't get these numbers to work just just make core cool changes in how ability damage is generated um where it's like cool take every ability not every ability sorry every weapon all the stats and just everything is now 90 percent it's like mm -hmm. so you still feel the same all the all the damages have the same ranges it's just that your base number has come down um i like that idea realistically it, it's it's the same as buffing the the mobs hp right i was gonna as much as players like to kill something really quick and it feels good like oh yeah i'm rinsing this boss really quickly you can get boring pretty quick especially when you're just like cool that mechanic skipped that mechanic skipped and then players are out here like oh we want mechanics and but it's like yes but you're skipping them all but yeah. then we're like, okay, so we'll bring your damage down. It's like, no, don't, don't do that. I like killing this thing quick. But it's like, okay, so there's no, there's no solution that you're happy with. Like e either we up the HP or the defenses now, because that's an option as well. We can just straight up up defenses. And it's just your number comes down. You don't get the horrible missing um, because of the new, hit, the, the new accuracy system. But if you're at 90% hit chance now, you're just 10% less damage. Um, well, I was going to say two things. One is your your point about bringing the whole damage down was something that I th thought I would quite like for necromancy. Obviously, the, the changes have happened and that, that idea isn't something I think anymore. But I liked that some abilities were good and some abilities weren't. And the, the ratio of damage with the conjures compared to the abilities, I thought if it was me, I'd have made it, I'd made it every single thing slightly worse so that you still have the same feel of the style. Um, yep. But the second thing I was going to say is killing Raziel post um, necromancy changes with the conjure and stuff, I have thoroughly enjoyed way more than before the changes because the fight is longer and I, I've experienced more of the fights. Um, and I, I get what you're saying about how players, they want to skip all the mechanics and do tons of damage and then they get annoyed when they skip all the mechanics and there are no mechanics. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, like like Solak, for example. Uh, Solak, I think, is one of the best designed bosses in the game. Um, and I think one of the hardest bosses in the game. But with the amount of power you have at the moment, um, a lot of the mechanics on certain phases just don't exist. Even if you're not trying to skip the mechanic, it just it's just not there. Um, so yeah, I think, I think players are tricky because we all want to skip the mechanic and then complain there's no mechanic. Um, but yeah, I think turning down the damage across the board is something I'm a fan of because it doesn't ruin any particular thing. I I have an idea. Go for it. So I think one of the fun fundamental issues with decreasing the player's power, even if it's by a, a small margin, like Sponge knows this very well, I think Pup understands it as well, is the players will be furious because it's a nerf and nerfs suck and you can't nerf things. We That's not allowed. Balancing the game is a terrible thing. Um, yep. But because from an optic standpoint, that's really tough. But I actually do think there are some valid reasons why players don't like nerfs. And a big part of that is a lot of for a lot of players, bosses aren't hard their sustained grinds to get log progression. There's yeah. an impact on the nerf that isn't just like, oh, the boss fight's a little a little harder. It's also like this literally, this change is going to add 12 hours of Raziel to my log. So to me, a, a good silver lining or a good way to do it would be to, like, what if you were to make the player do 20% less damage across the board, completely and utterly, like 20%, whatever whatever number you guys arrive at, but, I mean, Mod Ryan's spoken on this too. Mod Ryan has said that he thinks the game demands too much time of the player. Mm -hmm. So why not at the same time also adjust almost every drop rate in the game? And then that way you can roll them yeah. both out together. No one's grind gets any longer because the drop rates are better um, mm -hmm. and more reasonable for the expectation of how much you're playing. And then you roll them both out at the same time. That, that That's I mean, personally how I would do I think I think it's a good idea. I think there are caveats as there are with any solution um mm -hmm. in like 
um, you'd have some whiplash from players going, oh, you've changed the drop rate. Now all my stuff is worth, worth, worse less. Worse. Oh my goodness. Worth less. It's been a long day. Um, like you, you, you're always going to get that, that whiplash when you change drop rates. Um, that largely, I guess, is a messaging problem. If you were, if you were to to state everything in amount of hours, right? Where it's like, if you do it linear, uh, actually, there's no impact. It's the same amount of drops per correct. hour coming into yeah. the game, so yeah, it shouldn't impact like, prices yeah, if, at all. If 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 you listed it as like, oh, actually, this is x x percent of a Eldritch crossbow coming in per ten minutes or something, um, you could probably mitigate that. No, I, I think it's a good idea. Um, there's yeah questions on do you do, do you do you do anything with commons as well um i did do, do you go ah let's buff all the commons by 20 percent because just doing the rares my dp per hour is still lower um when you look at some boss where i don't know the commons make up a sizable portion of the gp um i, I can't think of any off the top of my head maybe sonic with pages or something yeah so with the pages be. is a big one like do you just go cool here's 20 percent more pages um, but yeah, I think that can mitigate it as well. Fractional Grim Pages. I want 1.2 Grim Pages per kill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting. Indis- indis- yeah, that didn't sound right. Uh, it's an interesting discussion because whenever there's a nerf um, to a style, it affects so many different people in completely different ways. Because um, obviously, if you're a speed killer, you, you don't like it because you're doing less damage. But there's not actually a reason why you don't like it. It's just it's worse like that's it it's just worse um and if you're going for a log or something like that then obviously you're spending more time um or if you're like a merchant or something we don't like merchants but if you're a merchant you know that that change is going to affect you and i think that's why sometimes people good get worried about nerfs is because it changes so much it's yep. it, it affects a lot of players in very different ways uh, and it's the same for buffs as well it affects a lot of players um and I think that's that's a worry for some people sometimes is that when there are changes, it can be detrimental or beneficial. Um, yeah. And it's sometimes worrying with that. Um, but then I think there's also the the side of it is that you have to just ignore the changes sometimes because at the end of the day, you're playing the game for fun. If Sponge is like, oh, hi, pup, your revenge is now 50% big, big. worse. It's like, should I really <laughs> care? No, ding, 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 I shouldn't. <laughs> It's, 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 it's like sometimes you just you just got to roll with the punches, right? It's yeah. Like, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. This thing is a nerf. Oh, but I did get fifty percent damage increase through X, Y, and Z item that's come out in the last month. Mm-hmm. Oh, but you took five percent from me. What are you doing? It's like well, no, yeah. you have to kind of you have to look at the bigger picture sometimes. Um, we're trying yeah, to tell that you've the had player an is, insane is amounts hard. of power creep in the, let's say I don't know two three years, um, but then a small nerf happens and we all lose our minds. Um, yeah. <laughs> I do find that entertaining and I'm also part of it. <laughs> yeah, that is a good point too, is I think a lot of the time when we're talking about like certain communities in, in RuneScape, whether it's Reddit or it's the PBME or whatever, I think a lot of the players that the devs hear from are very, very highly opinionated, highly vocal, highly aggressive. And I think a lot of the time in the community, and a lot of people have spoken on this, former Mod Pie spoke on this a lot too, is people are conditioned to yell as loud as they can so they get heard. And I think it's important to remember that like you don't need to yell as loud as you can anymore. There are tons of information channels and and passionate developers that want to help make the game better for everyone. So I think a lot of the time people can relax a little bit on their on their crazy, crazy takes and stances. And remember that this is a game that's supposed to be fun. The objective is to keep it fun, fair, balanced as much as possible and nerfing a player by one percent you don't need to scream bloody murder that that's ruined the entire game forever and you're canceling your membership like it just it, you don't need to be that intense about it and i think that will actually help uh, uh, moving forward as a community in in a lot of really big ways help the community be able to work more closely with the developers and and make the developers more open to trying to get out in the community and especially with things like this beta doesn't happen all the time right this is a pretty rare unique opportunity i think for the community to show that we can do a good job of of providing good honest genuine non-hyperbolic feedback in order to hopefully shape the game for the better definitely I agree. yeah i think because if there's a small change like oh they're changing fsoa or they're changing in send it's it's a lot of reactionary feedback that is really not thought through um where something like this beta like we we know it's not 
necessarily happening. We are able to test a huge amount, um, and we can look at it more objectively. I think so. It's it's definitely um, nicer. I think for the the mods that that receive the feedback, I think it's a lot more useful to them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think a big thing with this sort of thing is like as much as you have to try and take the emotion out of it and the the gut instinct of, of things that we do. Um, because ultimately, if like players don't like something in the beta, we just won't do it. It's like it's really not that big a deal. Um, mm -hmm. Like even today, I've seen I've seen people freaking out over the potion changes, and it's like, okay, if it's yeah. actually that big of a deal, we won't do it. But here's X, Y, and Z reason why it's a good thing. Um, but players just go damage down bad and like don't put any other thought into it. Sorry, um, I've logged in with the, the potion changes, and there's there's so many other buffs that honestly logging in today felt like a buff compared to yesterday even though there's there's been the potion nerf and i think players really do need to try out those things like if you if you want to try out the beta then then definitely give it a go and give feedback i um so many uh, comments to sponge's plate were just is the potion change a buff or a nerf and someone in my chat replied to the ball and said it is a buff to logic and a slight nerf to damage <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's the that's the example though. Players don't care. They just like, hi, is it a buff or nerf? That's that's all they want, and that's a, that's a it's an interesting mindset. If you, if you don't necessarily care about trying out the the change, all you want to know is, am I going to do more damage or less damage? You know. Uh, that's also partially why I think it's so important that like we're really covering this beta and having conversations like this. And I'm really appreciative of both you guys coming on and doing it because. I'll give you a good example. My my beta video from that I posted yesterday, I think 25,000 people have watched it. There are currently 47 people on the beta right now. And mm -hmm. that's why I think covering it like this is is really, really important because a lot of people don't have the gear to test it out. A lot of people don't have the interest. A lot of people can't get the beta working. And a lot of people just, they want to know the rundown. Is it good or it's bad? They don't want to actually put an effort. And yes. their opinion is valid the same way that anyone else's is. So it's a it's a really good way to, I think, yeah, expand the, the reach of something like this. Because I always find it shocking that like, these are huge combat changes that are gonna impact RuneScape forever. And almost no one is trying it out because it's not the live game. <laughs> I have a question that's kind of a, a community one. Um, so yep. there was recently in the live game, there was a war event where people just had infinite auras. I don't know if anyone else felt mm -hmm. this. You can you can yell in chat if you did. That was the best PVMing experience I've ever had. And it made me realize and understand how awful and how much I hate the aura system. Like, I don't mind the existence of auras, but the fact that they don't just last infinitely and it's like this balancing point for how much of the game you can enjoy without having to spend something. Is, is that on I your guys' radar at all? Because like being able to just pop an aura for, for one kill at a boss because someone wanted to learn a boss and they don't want to do a whole hour. I just want to take them through one ambi run or whatever. Like it was like it was so nice. And yeah, is that on your radar as something you could do to also make combat a little more uh, appealing, easier to get into? It's on the radar, definitely. Um, that's, and I know how annoying it is. That's, I, I literally, I added it to the war event because I was like, this is, this is super annoying to do. You're um, my hero. It was, yeah. Um, yes, we want to do something with auras in, there's like different levels to it. Um, one with duration, two with source, as in where you get them from. Um, I don't, I don't want to speak for everyone. So I'll do I don't think how you obtain auras is great. I think it should be an in-game thing. And it doesn't have to be purely hypothetical, but like, oh, you craft them with rune crafting in some way, or oh, you get aura fragments from doing different stuff, and you make the auras, and you get to choose what you're making um, instead of this. I love that. Some are on wars, some are in different places, some are on loyalty store. It's like it's just, it's just, it's just not nice to deal with. Um, like if you're a new player start and you're like, yeah, I really want to get up to date. I've, I've seen someone, someone doing combat. I really want to get involved. And it's like, yeah, but you have to be a member for X amount of time to get these auras or and it's like, oh, mm -hmm. that's shit. Um, like I think they should be grindable in some way. Um, but then the duration thing as well. Yeah. Um, there are caveats. Um, I get the phrasing from Mod Ryan because it's his favorite, fr his favorite phrase is there's caveats. As there are, as there is with anything, um, it's like, is it all auras that are just have no duration now, or is it just combat? If it's all auras, what does that mean for like 
the farming aura uh, but it's all those little things we have to think about um, and skilling isn't my strongest suit um, I'd be pretty fine with just going cool here's all the combat auras they have no time like, I don't really see an issue with that players are resetting them anyways um, have a take go for it if the duration of an aura is infinite what's the point of it existing why not just give the buff to the player because they're then stacking, right? It's like power on top of power. At least, at least with an aura, you're making a decision. Um, but are you making with, a conscious decision? Really? My problem with berserk auras is that it removes the decision, and it's always you should use a berserk aura. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. um, that's why previously on a game jam, <laughs> I put, I put a, a tweet out or a picture out of like, "Yo, berserk auras they no longer boost your accuracy," and everyone was like, oh, "What I the that. fuck? Yeah. Crazy!" Yeah, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that that should be a thing because berserk auras boost all your stats. Why do we have accuracy auras if a berserk aura boosts it? Right, like so yeah. backwards. Um, something I might mm -hmm. try out um, in the beta is doing something with berserk auras specifically. Um, maybe trial trial the damage and not the accuracy, and then just go ham on buffing the accuracy auras. So if you want to actually use the accuracy auras now. If you want damage, oh, use damage auras. There's, there's a little bit of decision making, at least. I was, I was going to say, sp we specifically didn't add Berserker Necromancy Aura because we don't agree with the design of them. Um, so it's a hard one to figure out what the right thing to do is. Um, but I don't like the state they're in right now. I'm not a fan of the way Marks of War are because, so if I, I think most people that PVM in, let's say, a day, will probably kill the same boss with probably the same style. Um, that's obviously an assumption, but that's generally what I've seen, including myself. And the more you PVM over a certain amount of hours, the less, oh, sorry, the, the more resets you use, because obviously there's, you know, you're using the same aura. So what happens is if you do like one hour, then you get tons of marks of war. And then if you do two, you're, you're getting slightly less. But then if you're doing like, let's say five, hours although you're pvming more and putting more effort in you're losing out because you're using more auras and you're not gaining more marks of war um and it's because the cap is 1000 but per hour you're using 3000 obviously cap is an iffy subject because if it's uncapped you just then you know spam it and then you're set for a while but i think the the concept to me is that the more you pvm the more aura resets you should have but in reality, it's the opposite. It's the more you PVM, the less aura resets you have. Kind of plays into what I was saying is like, I think aura should come from gameplay and through a skill. I think aura resets should come from skill. And I think life resets should just come from divination so that you have the PVMers feeding the skillers and the skillers making stuff the PVMers actually want. Um, as in, like, I go on the GM to go, buy a life reset. Some skillers gone and made that with X amount of divination energy and some items. We get a good item sync. Um, I'm like, oh, or a reset. I'm going to go buy one of those. Again, some skillers made that. Um, not on War's shop. Um, it's weird because the marks of War as a whole, they kind of need a consumable. Otherwise, they just serve no purpose once you've unlocked everything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know <laughs> what, what to actually, what you'd give players in response. Um, I also I don't I know have a hot take on was three anyways in that I don't like its existence. I, I, I do. I am aware of your your thoughts on the. I don't agree with wars retreat existing in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. You're gonna have people screaming bloody murder in the chat now. Don't worry, it's not going anywhere. Um, I feel like I'm a very much a minority. Uh, Mod Ryan was one of the people that designed wars retreat, so I don't think I could tell him to to just just kill it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like the the portals. Um, I think it makes the game world feel small. Um, it does. I feel like and the fact that you can enter a player and house can be stuff like that. Yeah, in fact, so you can enter a boss with with tons of adrenaline, tons of buffs ac buffs active. Exactly. It makes half of the buffs feel necessary or irrelevant during the boss fight. Yeah. There's stuff I like about Wars Retreat, and there's also stuff that I dislike about it. First off, I'm just going to really quickly, for Pup's aura comment, the decision-making aspect of choosing, like, oh, I don't have Conservation of Energy, so let's use uh, Supreme Invigorate instead, or let's use Inspiration, or let's use Vampire Penance. Like, those aura decisions I actually think are great. 
I just think like the Zerker ones, yes. yeah, are, are are not so good. But like the you, the, right? the actual aura gameplay, like and and choosing what you want, I actually really like because it kind of helps you go into a build. But on the wars thing, mm -hmm. okay, I think the Adren Crystal great because it teaches people to like have a dread although arguably a dread should just always be 100 percent out of combat and it should just stay there and that should be by default and that shouldn't yep. be an unlock because people ask me every day why is your adren not dropping and it's like oh no you sweet summer child um how many hours of pdm <laughs> so the two things i don't like about wars being able to go into a fight with buffs that were activated on dummies i think that's kind of stupid mm -hmm. so like stalling and incend on and people are gonna not like me for this but i don't think that's great mm -hmm. uh stalling incend on a dummy and then going in and releasing it on your boss like i don't like that and then the other thing i don't like or that i think is really weird is if it's designed to make pvming accessible how come you need thousands of boss kills in order to make the boss killing easier to me like yep. if you're gonna have a crystal that gives you a dren mm -hmm. or a boss portal you're telling me that a new player is supposed to kill 2,000 bosses before getting an altar to restore their prayer before a boss fight. It's just, it seems so counterintuitive where it's like, yep. if this is designed to make PVMing accessible, why did you gatekeep all the accessibility options behind PVMing? Yep. I, it just, it makes no freaking sense to me. I think it also actually limits player decision making in the sense of, Take Raziel's fortress right now. You just teleport there. You're fully geared and everything. If the portal didn't exist, there would be some people out there that come up with a build or a gear set where they can get multiple kills a trip. Act like mm -hmm. RuneScape used to be, where you, you'd go to a boss, you do multiple kills a trip. Um, but instead, now you're essentially forced going back to Wars Retreat, gearing up, going back in because it's just so much more efficient. Like it's overbearingly efficient where. If I was to just camp a boss, I'd be getting less kills than the guy that leaves after every kill. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that the problem didn't make sense. In some cases, that is sometimes an issue with how the bosses spawn, though. Because even even something that is really, really fast, let's say, like, Bandos, it is it is still faster to go back towards Retreat, go back into the instance. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think technically it's the fastest is to just leave the instance and rejoin rather than actually yeah. telling. But... Um, that's always been a, a, a weird scenario. But but what Ryan said about buffs, um, having buffs before you enter a boss instance, uh, I'm definitely going to get flamed for this, but I almost agree with him. The amount of buffs that I have before I enter a boss instance is stupid. Um, as, as much as I love the gameplay, as much as I love speed killing, because um, I pulled up one of my speed kills for Gobbles Dungeons 2, and I have Berserk active, Annihilation active, Natural Instinct active, Revenge active, Dragon Battle axe active. Obviously, I have an aura, um, and I have a crit buff active. That's that's an insane amount of buffs, and I haven't even entered the boss instance. Yeah. Um, and that's not including uh, you know tons of other buffs that are you know a little bit different. But I I kind of agree. It makes it makes boss fight uh, obviously depending on the level of PVM you are, it's different, right? Um, mm -hmm. But for a lot of high tier PVMers that including me, they do like it, but it does make these builds feel like half of the boss fight. Like, I have a rotation yep. for whatever I'm doing before Raziel, right? Um, which maybe shouldn't be the way it is. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, and I think as a speed killer yourself, right, changing mm -hmm. that to where the speed kill was in the boss fight, I'd, actually, it's, uh, I'd argue it's a good thing. Yes. The, num the, the amount of time it took you to kill the boss is longer. But the amount of mm -hmm. time between attempts is shorter. You're killing more bosses. And you're not just doing all of your rotation prior to actually going into the uh, into the portal, right? Like you said. Yeah, um, the counter argument would... Out of the portal than in the portal. Yeah, the, the counter argument is that you would... Let's say you just made a change that all buffs cleared upon was portal um mm -hmm. you would have people getting a setup kill and then setting up yep. for the speed kill for the second kill of the instance um which is how magister is generally speed killed um yeah which you know it's, it's not ideal how it's designed it's so weird, I think, right yeah it's it's still weird um so i think although the wars retreat isn't ideal i think it's existing is probably the smoothest way of it existing um because if it didn't, players would find a really awkward workaround and complain about the awkward workaround.
I like the one um, God, God Wars Two. Bring it, bring in a random mob close to the gate so you can prep on that, and then I don't dislike like Sponge was saying he misses people killing a boss multiple kills per trip, and the idea that I agree your fastest that. Yeah. kill isn't your first one because you can end out your first kill setting up for the second kill. Like I actually don't hate that at all. That, that that's what mm-hmm. I meant about like I actually don't dislike that. Is like. I think the yeah. way Magister's speed killed is actually really cool because one of the few bosses where you don't just do a 20 ability setup at wars and then chuck through the portal and then yeet the boss in two seconds because you actually have to like it actually makes you think and it's actually unique. So, yeah, that that's sort of mm-hmm. I I actually don't hate that idea. Yeah, I, I kind of see a point because because Magister was actually the, the first boss I speed killed. Um, so I did a lot of the, the get the kill and then um, set up for the next kill and the second kill is actually your your record kill. And I got because normally when I do speed kills, I get absolutely nothing. I get no uh, no XP, no boss kills, no XP or whatever. But I I spent a lot of time actually killing Magister in just the setup kills, and it was it was honestly kind of nice. So I I do see your your point of view there definitely. Okay, I think it's time for Mod Sponge to leave us. Before but, I implode. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. Did you have any 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 parting thoughts? Delete dummies, not the wars retreat ones. I'd like to have an argument. So that, no, I'd pop you in. I'm, you don't get to make an argument because he has to go. Doesn't I agree matter, with you. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm with Sponge on this. Matter. Completely with Sponge on this. Um, <laughs> and Pup just has to mold because there's no time. Um, but uh, before we wrap up for today, uh, guys, can we get some love hearts in chat for both Pup and Mod Sponge taking time out of their busy schedules to hang out? And both people in the group chat were like, we have nothing going on. Um, but taking the time to actually come here and, <laughs> and, and chat and chop it up about uh, about combat and RuneScape. Uh, it's so cool that we got to do this. I just wanted to very quickly say uh, you can check out Sponge on Twitter. You can check out Pup um, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, all that good stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to quickly say thank you so much for this discussion because, uh, I think a lot of people learned a lot of, uh, really, really interesting insights about, about how combat works. And, uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks so much for coming on. I hope you had a, had a good time and, uh, yeah, hopefully we get to do it again soon. It was really fun. Thank you. I'd yeah. Be glad had a great to time. Come back once I've, uh, once I've deleted SGB and Great Barge <laughs> and some other pains in my brain. All right, um, so we'll see you in two days for about. version three. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some final words. For those watching this YouTube video, if you have an interest in checking the beta out, please do check the beta out. Sponge and Ryan have spent a ton of time on this, and I think that even whatever level of PVM you are, you will thoroughly enjoy trying out all the changes. So I would definitely give it a go, basically. 100%. Somehow, somehow pup covers everything I should be covering way better than I do. Uh, <laughs> That's why he's here. I'm just going to explain combat more to him, then he can just take my job. It's clearly the, the optimal <laughs> solution. Here. Okay, perfect. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.